slow. One is a hard downer. He cuts a fastball in on left-handers. Very good fielder. And we say he's cool on the mound because he can battle through some difficult situations that never show any ill effects, never negative on the mound. He's not afraid to use his fielders either. And here's how the Mets will set up today defensively behind Bobby Jones. And check out the outfield. Tony Phillips in left field. Lenny Harris at right. How does Brian McRae keep a straight face out there and keep his game face on? Well, he might not be able to smile if he's out of puff because he's going to have have to cover a lot of ground in the in the alleys. Uh, both Phillips and Harris can run, but the true good defensive outfielder is McCray in center. But Tony Phillips can play anywhere, and of course he makes things happen. Very good defensive unit uh, for this Mets ball club, number two in the league. This broadcast is also available in Spanish by utilizing the SAP button on your television. And we're set for baseball today. How nice is this day? It seems like a little bit later in September than. Early September as we're on this Labor Day weekend. Nazi Gian is ready to go. The former White Sox shortstop was with Baltimore earlier this season. Now in a leadoff role here with the Braves. And we're underway with ball one. The umpires today calling balls and strikes Wally Bell. Larry Van Over at first. Mark Ersbeck at second. And Bruce Freming is working third base and the left field line. Ozzie Gann in a leadoff role. <laughs> you uh, took a look at that when you were managing him in Chicago. Yeah, 1989, I took over the White Sox, and I thought, well, Ozzie Gann's down the bottom of the order. We didn't have much speed. I'll try him in a leadoff role. It doesn't work, or it didn't at that time, because he didn't take enough pitches. But how about that? He's taken three pitches, has a two-and-one count. Well, that's a record for when I'm I in a ballpark. But <laughs> me too. Ozzie's so great. I ended up putting him in the ninth spot, and he laughed about it. He said, I'm comfortable here. Leave me alone. But now, later on in his career, he is filling a different role for Bobby Cox. Nice, lively fastball by Bobby Jones. Two balls and two strikes. And here's Guillen playing in the absence of Walt Weiss. Well, it is so important because Walt's had uh, leg problems, and he's, he's injured again. He's an all-star shortstop. And this was the last pitch. This is a good sinking fastball from Bobby Jones. Nice movement. Two and two on Ozzie Gian. Out of play. One thing about Gian, he can get to two strikes, and he can look very bad on a certain swing, but he's hard to strike out. He really is. What he does with two strikes, he spreads out his feet a little bit. He doesn't try to commit too much. He just try to put the ball in play. In fact, when I first started to use him with the White Sox, I said, Ozzie, you know, you give away at bats early in the game. Why don't you hit early in the game like you do late when the game's on the line? And this is what he does. See how he spread his stance out. Now he doesn't commit as early. But he's trying to fill this role, and a role that he has not filled in his major league career very much. As I say, he's probably hit ninth uh, as much as almost everybody in the game. You made him a team captain, a co-captain along with Carlton Fisk in Chicago. And he was great at it. Gian hits the ball hard to center field. Brian McRae in the alley and a sliding catch. You talked about McRae having to cover some ground, and sure enough, he covers some real estate on the very first batter. Good call, John. He did have to cover it. We weren't sure whether this ball was going to hang up or not. And at the last minute, he dove for the ball with a backhand, and it's a nice play. That is the kind of play that outfielders can really get hurt on. When they dive with a backhand, sometimes that glove gets caught under him, and they injure a wrist. Brian McRae has really, really come into his game the second half of this season for the Mets, both offensively and defensively. Now Michael Tucker, the right fielder. That's a foul ball on the first baseline. Tucker has hit 12 home runs, driving in 43. He comes into today's game hitting 252. He has been a nice pickup for the Atlanta Braves, adding some pop to their lineup. He adds speed to the lineup as well. That's right, another left-handed bat. The big curveball does not find the strike zone. One ball, one strike. The Braves go catch the ball. They pitch it, they catch it, and now they're hitting the ball this season. Yes. When they won the World Championship, Bobby Cox's team hit 250. And in baseball, you knew with the Dodgers, Jeff, that if you held the team down, caught the baseball, pitched it well, you'd find a run somewhere. Yes, uh, without a doubt. Uh, the game that we saw here at Shea Stadium last night was a two to one game won by the the Mets ball club but it was an old fashioned pitchers duel and neither of these teams beats themselves in in the field which is really big and they manufacture runs well Tucker he ticked it but he's out on strikes 
Mike Piazza hangs on. There's the first strikeout for Bobby Jones. And let's have a look at it. You know, here's the difference in a guy who's a good control pitcher who changes speeds, has some action. That was only 84 miles an hour. He doesn't blow the ball by anybody. But good movement, though. But it has movement, and he changes speed so much that if you use an off-speed pitch, then all of a sudden when you throw your fastball, it looks much harder. Chipper Jones, 315, 32 homers, 100 RBIs. Ball one. How good is this player, Jeff? He's an exceptional player, John. He's one of the real bright young players in this game. You know, the thing that you see when you see a Chipper Jones, you see a guy who has an appreciation for the game, who's dedicated to playing the game the way it's supposed to be played. He even likes to wear his uniform with a sock showing as the old timers used to. He is a guy that is kind of a throwback type player. He pulls the ball to second baseman Carlos Baerga. A fly out, a strikeout, a ground out, and the Braves go in order. Tony Phillips, Edgardo Alfonso, and John Olerud are coming up. Valentine's New York Mets. Tony Phillips is leading off in left. Edgardo Alfonso bats second at third. John Olerud, the first baseman. He's second in the league to Larry Walker, just four percentage points behind. Mike Piazza is catching, hitting fifth in center field. Brian McRae, Lenny Harris is in right field today. And again, the number seven spot at second base, Carlos Baerga. Ray Ardonia's bats eighth at shortstop, and Bobby Jones hits number nine. Kevin Millwood is making the start today. He's 14 and eight. Well, this guy is a guy that fits into their rotation because he's not intimidated. He has good numbers, fewer hits in innings pitched. Good pitcher, hard nosed young kid. Let's look at the scouting report on Millwood as he gets set to make his 26 start. Well, he's got a fastball that touches 90 miles an hour, sometimes more than that. Only a four-seamer. Doesn't make the ball sink. But he throws a slider, a curveball, and a circle changeup. And as we mentioned, he's a tough guy. He's not intimidated on the mound. Bill Wood, a no decision at St. Louis on Sunday. Five innings, eight hits, five earned runs. Strike one to Tony Phillips. Phillips, a 263 hitter. Two home runs, 16 RBIs, while with the Mets, 227, one homer and nine RBIs. He played with the Toronto Blue Jays before coming over to the New York Mets. The thing about Tony Phillips, you don't really have to look at his numbers. You just look at what he, the impact he has on the clubs that he's around. He gets on base, he walks, he's a threat. He doesn't steal the bases like he used to, but he makes things happen. But we like to call it the Phillips factor. And it's interesting, you know, here's the ability to get on base. He's a smart base runner. He's, he's not switch fast hitter. as he used to be. No, but he's still, he's a threat. You can't fall asleep, and he's feisty. Boy, that's a nice term to put for a guy who's got the fire he has. But, you know, we're talking about the Phillips factor. There's a double Phillips factor here in New York. Steve Phillips, the general manager, the young general manager of the Mets, has been exceptional what he's done, bringing in the likes of Tony Phillips. Mike Piazza, Nomo. Lighter. I mean, all the guys that are part of this team now that are new. As Tony fouls another one off, and this is what Tony can do. That's Steve Phillips. Tony can do this. He can foul off pitch after pitch after pitch. And boy, does that show up later in a ball game. Oh, does it ever. And I'll tell you, now the pitcher starts aiming the ball. Now, Tony gets into this, you know, this crouch where it, he makes the strike zone look like it's about four inches high, and he really makes the pitchers work. Phillips gets the ring up from Wally Bell. One out. Defensively behind Kevin Millwood today. The Braves line up like this. At first base, Greg Colburn is playing with Andres Galarraga, serving a three-game suspension. This is game three for being involved in a fight. Well, uh, that's a big hole. Not taking any away from Greg Colburn. He's a good hitter, but Galarraga is a gold glove type fielder, not to mention with all the power that he has. The Braves miss him. Strike one here to Edgardo Alfonso and for Galarraga serving the third game of a three game suspension for his involvement in a brawl with the Dodgers on August the 22nd. Alfonso a 280 hitter you saw his numbers 15 homers 70 RBIs and uh, he has perked up a little bit since Tony Phillips came on board hasn't he, he has and John you see it all the time when you have runners on base in front of certain hitters they get more fastballs. Now the count at one ball or two balls and a strike I should say with one out Tony Phillips struck out in the chase for Roger Maris's home run record we're going to be showing you each of Mark McGuire's at bats today from Bush Stadium against the Cincinnati Reds 
So we will be following that one closely right along with the Braves and the Mets here. So the Braves are playing for the best record in the National League. And the Mets are playing for the wild card. The Mets started play today one game behind the Cubs. Breaking ball doesn't break enough. The Cubs are playing Pittsburgh tonight at Three Rivers. John, we were talking about Kevin Millwood, about how young he is and how he's not intimidated amongst this great starting rotation. He showed it by throwing a curveball at Tony Phillips. That's a strike. Two strikeouts for Millwood. And Alfonso thought he had checked his swing but did not. So two strikeouts, and John Olerud is going to be stepping up. Let's check in on Mark McGuire now. Joe Buck and Tim McCarver are following the action for Bush Stadium. Let's listen and watch. We would like to welcome you watching the Atlanta Braves and the New York Mets. The man who every time he walks to the plate gets a standing ovation around these parts. Mark McGuire. 59 home runs and counting. Last night his first game back from a road trip in which he hit four home runs in a couple of days in Florida. He was hitless against the Cincinnati Reds. His next home run would be number 60. And a ball down and in. Dennis Reyes is a rookie and Mark McGuire has 57 at bats against rookie pitchers this year with eight home runs. McGuire with 59, two out in front of Sosa at the moment as he takes ball two, two and oh, which draws the wrath of the fans here at Bush Stadium. The Cincinnati Reds have not allowed a McGuire home run in 1998, the only team in the National League that can say that. In the left field, they can't say it. from Dennis Reyes and Mark McGuire can make all those skeptics now forget as Jordan hits one off the glove of Boone that should be a double for Brian Mark McGuire Tim McCarver can make all the skeptics forget about the 154 game schedule as he hits number 60 to tie their former record held by Babe Ruth, which stood for 34 years in the Cardinals' 141st game of 1998. Babe Ruth hit his 60th in the Yankees' 154th game in 1927. A 2 0 fastball from Dennis Reyes. And I wonder who caught it. Whoever it is is being ushered to a very safe place right now, which is Major League Baseball's policy. You catch the home run, you come with some people dressed in security guard outfits, and you go to a safe holding spot, and then you start making decisions. Here's Gant, who takes a ball low. I'll ask you, Tim McCarver. You're the average fan. You catch the home run, what do you do with it? Sing and watching. Congratulations to McGuire, and we will have coverage tomorrow of the Cardinals and the Cincinnati Reds, 4 p.m. Eastern, 1 p.m. Pacific time on Fox Sports. Mike Piazza is the batter now with an 0-2 count, and John Olerud drew a first-inning walk to extend the inning 
to Mike Piazza and you know what usually happens when uh, the number three batter walks with two outs don't you. Yeah. Something big. He usually scores and with Piazza behind him even though he's 0 2 in the count is so dangerous. One ball two strikes on Piazza. Twenty nine home runs. Twenty is a member of the New York Mets. John, he's homered we, in his last three games. I'm sorry. We've talked so much about what Piazza's done lately but he's got the kind of power and maybe not quite as much power as McGuire but in that neighborhood. Well a 485 foot home run that we saw in the open of our telecast today that just disappeared into the night. And he hit one last week where he hit it out into the uh, parking lot. You can see what he's done throughout his career. Remember folks this is a catcher behind the plate every day. Four grand slams. One is a member of the Mets. Their only grand slam this season. And he hits the ball to left field. Ryan Cresco runs it down. No runs, no hits, a walk, one left on. We played one. No score between the Mets and the Braves. After one, the Braves at the Mets today at Shea Stadium. And after the last out of the first inning, the fans saw this on the big screen. Mark McGuire, the replay of his 60th home run. And listen to the reaction at Shea Stadium. Tomorrow, you can't miss a special edition of Fox Saturday Baseball. Mark McGuire will have a chance to etch a place in baseball history. When he looks to break Roger Maris's record, it all starts at 4 Eastern, 1 Pacific, after Fox NFL Sunday only on Fox Sports. But the fans reacted here like it happened here. Well, they're baseball fans. You know, the New York fans can be maligned at times because they can be fickle, but they appreciate greatness. Ryan Klusko. A 2 0 count on the cleanup batter for the Atlanta Braves. Bobby Jones on the mound today as you look at Klusko wearing the elbow guard, as many hitters do now. And a big swing and a foul ball. Klusko, the breakdown against the lefties and the righties. Hasn't hit a home run against the left handers. 16 homers, 61 runs batted in. A looper to Bayerga. Four up and four down for Bobby Jones. We saw him a couple of weeks ago, Jeff, and Jones has much more command on the mound today than he did against the Diamondbacks. Exactly, John. When we did that game here at Shea Stadium on Fox, we, we talked about his being wild in the strike zone. And, of course, sometimes that's base baseball terminology. What it meant was he couldn't locate. Even though he was throwing some strikes, they were right in the middle of the plate and he was getting whacked around. Bob Apodaca, of course, a very good pitching coach of the Mets, had worked with him and they worked him through that game. He really did a nice job getting through it. But with that pitch there, you can see that he's locating. He's painting the corners. He's not in the middle of the plate. And that's his game, isn't it? Yes. Bobby Jones at nine and seven. Oh, he jammed him. Bayergo covers a lot of ground and on the run. Nice play by Olerud at first base to get Javi Lopez. You're right. This was a nice play. And one of the knocks on Bayerga when he was traded from the Indians to the Mets was that he had lost his range because he was too heavy. Well, he had had a bad ankle during the World Series that prior year. But this is a nice play. And as you mentioned, Olrud, the gold glove first baseman, just stayed with it, didn't panic when the throw was offline. Well, you see a lot of guys jumping around over at first base, but look at that smooth stretch. Yes. Here's Andrew Jones. He had his 20th home run of the season, August 8th at San Francisco. Over the last 30 years, only three younger players have hit 20 home runs in a season at a younger age. Ken Griffey Jr., 20 years, 10 months. Alex Rodriguez, 21 years, one month. Bob Horner, 21 years, one month. Boy, what jumps into your mind is the two home runs in the first inning of the first World Series game he ever played in against the Yankees at Yankee Stadium. How about that? A kid goes into Yankee Stadium against Andy Pettit, hits two home runs in the first game of the World Series. This kid's tools are unlimited. This year earlier, he got in the doghouse a little bit because Bobby Cox felt like he wasn't focused on the game. He was not appreciating what he was doing. So Bobby Cox took him out of the game and had a man to man talk with his youngster and he really likes the kid but he's Bobby says he has a standard by which he holds these players and this kid is on 
just unlimited potential. A hot shot, a one hop to Ray Ordonez. What hands? Six up and six down for Bobby Jones. The Mets are coming up in the second inning of a scoreless game in New York. And by the United States Army Reserve. Be all you can be. Shea Stadium in New York. No score going to the bottom of the second inning. What a glorious day at the ballpark. The temperature in the 70s, the humidity is low. And this is a meaningful game for the New York Mets because they're trailing the Cubs by a game for the wild card. Every game is going to mean something for them. And you see Brian McRae hitting a career high 20 home runs. Batting 272, having a solid season for the Mets. Millwood misses the strike zone to McRae. That's a good spot for McRae. He can get on. He can steal a base. He can set the table for the lower part of the lineup. Well, he can, John. So often when you think about how you set your lineup, when you thought of Brian McRae in the past, a lot of clubs that he had played with, Kansas City and the Cubs, would bat him in the leadoff spot. He's not your prototypical leadoff hitter, but if you can put him back in the order, he can give you speed back there and also a little power. And give you a good RBI production with Olerud, Piazza, and Alfonso Phillips on ahead of him. But how many times are you leading off, really? You lead off That's the game true. one time. That's true. And when you make your lineup out, you want to make sure you have the speed in areas where it can't get clogged up. In other words, when you have the speed at the top of the order, you want to make sure if you have a chance that, and, and Tony La Russa has done it this year in the, in the National League by batting the pitcher eighth and putting a speedy runner in the ninth spot, which is kind of uh, innovative. McCray's out. He knows it. Three strikeouts for Kevin Millwood. Two called, and then Alfonso went down swinging. Well, we talked about Millwood's stuff. We talked about the fact that he throws a riding fastball. That's a cross-seam fastball. That's not a sinking fastball. And that ball you just saw run right upstairs on McCray is the way that he pitches with his fastball when he gets ahead, hard on the hands. A line drive into center field as Harris makes contact, but Andrew Jones is there, two outs. You know, John, you watch Andrew Jones play center field, and he plays it with such grace and with such athleticism, but with also a cockiness. You know, he doesn't panic. He's got a first step quickness. And, and I think sometimes the guys that are so good sometimes look like they're loafing. And it makes people jump on their cases, you know, and they're expecting an awful lot of this young man. But before his career is over, if he doesn't have a catastrophic injury, he's going to be one of those guys in the record books, I think. Bobby Cox said the best center fielder he has seen play. Wow. You've seen both. Jones and Ken Griffey. Who's better in center field? Well, Ken Griffey, uh, to me right now, is as good a player as there is in the game. To I me, haven't... I think Griffey's the best all-around player. Yes, I think you're right. But I have to say, when you talk about uh, Bobby Cox, he has seen a lot of good baseball. He's managed a lot of good baseball. He's played with Mickey Mantle and of course he's the manager that took this youngster out of center field when he looked like he wasn't paying enough attention to the game and since he has just been outstanding an outstanding pitch by Millwood to Carlos Baerga one and two count nobody on base two outs we're still looking for the first hit in the game John Olerud walked with two outs but Piazza hit a fly ball for an out in the first inning and now two up and two gone in the second. Big curveball, ball two. Two balls and two strikes. John, I was starting to say before we went to see Mark McGuire make history that Millwood has such confidence on the mound, even in a 2 2 count where a lot of rookies won't throw a breaking ball. He dropped the curveball in before for a strikeout. High in the air and an easy play for Andrew Jones. Just a walk in the park on a Saturday afternoon for him as Bayerga flies out. We're going to the third in New York. No score, and we'll return to Shea Stadium after this word from your local Fox station. McGuire's everywhere, isn't he? <laughs> Grew a beard between innings. Mark McGuire in St. Louis hit his 60th home run in his first at bat, and we'll be following his progress today as the Cardinals and the Reds move along at Bush Stadium. There's strike one to Greg Colbrin as we move along to the third inning. The Atlanta Braves are batting. We've not had a hit. Colburn at 299, three homers and 19 runs batted in. Back with the Atlanta Braves. And a strike to him, 0 and 2. 
Of course, John, he's in the place of Andres Galarraga, who is sitting out of suspension for a fight against the Dodgers. And boy, with Alan Galarraga's numbers down, that really hurts the Braves. Look what he's hit this year. Here's a guy that when he signed as a free agent here with the Braves, everyone said no. His his uh, big home run and RBI totals were in the light air of Denver. He won't do that in Atlanta. Corbin tried to wait and wait for the breaking ball. One ball and two strikes. Well, Galarraga with his 42 home runs. It's a Braves franchise record by a first baseman. The old record, Joe Adcock, at 38 in 1956. And Galarraga's home runs, RBIs on mm. the bench again today. Broken back ground ball. Fierga throws him out. We've been talking about the Galarraga suspension. Let's take a look at why. Going back to August the 22nd. Darren Dreifert on the mound. And the big cat was cat like in getting to the mound. And a good thing Dreifert ducked, huh? Yeah, you're talking about two big men fighting here. Now, Galarraga had been hit so many times this year, he had enough. He's been hit 22 times. And he said even if he gets hit again, now, Dreyford had already hit him before during the year. He said he was going after him. He had enough of it. Galarraga is the first player in Major League history to hit at least 40 home runs in consecutive years for two different teams. Mm. But that's baseball in the 90s. Yes. Graffinino with a 1 1 count. Tony Graffinino hitting 207, five home runs, 21 RBIs. Keith Lockhart has been bothered by an injury, and Graffinino has been picking up the slack at second base. Hey, you know, when you look at this Braves team, John Sherholz, the general manager, and Bobby Cox have not been shy about changing the, the feel of the ball club a little bit, kept their core people, but they made changes around it. But every time the Braves have made a change, they brought in a player who can significantly help the club, whether it's on the bench, whether it's in an everyday role, but they never hurt the chemistry in the clubhouse. No, they really didn't. They get such character, and they get that from their manager. He is one of the classiest guys in the game. He's not caught up with ego in his position. He just is a very strong person, outstanding baseball guy. Just off the outside corner, three and two on Graffinino with no one on deck. When you think about what Bobby Cox has done, he was a very successful manager with the Braves to begin with. Then he went up to the Toronto Blue Jays and built them into the power that they became. On the infield, Ray Ardonez shading his eyes from the sun to the center field grass, two outs. Tomorrow, it's the premiere of Fox NFL Sunday. Most of you will see a classic NFC East battle as the Redskins take on the Giants, plus other regional action. It all starts tomorrow at noon Eastern, 9 a.m. Pacific. We'll have the pregame show live from Giants Stadium with Terry, Howie, JB, and Chris Collinsworth, only on Fox. No score here. No hits in our game. Top of the third inning, pitcher against pitcher. Bill Wood with strike one has four hits in 41 at bats. No homers in RBI. He has struck out 17 times. Bobby Jones is breezing the first time through the lineup. Out of play down the right field line, but wouldn't you know it, uh, perfect through eight, the pitcher reaches out and drops one in right field for a safety. Uh, that certainly can happen. You know, John, we were talking about Bobby Cox. A lot of people forget that when he left the Blue Jays, he came back to the Braves as a general manager. And he's the man who built the club with selection of outstanding young pitching arms and put that Braves team together before he went back down on the field. Well, he became Dr. No, as you recall, when all yes. the teams were calling, wanting a Tom Glavin, wanting John Smoltz. Yes, and he was very patient, and, and it was tough to be that way because they ended up in last place three consecutive years. There's a drive, right center field. But that will be caught. Lenny Harris puts it away, and Jones is perfect the first time through the lineup. The Mets are coming up. No score in New York. We would like to welcome those of you who have been watching the Atlanta Braves and the New York Mets. Mark McGuire in his first at bat, a 2-0 pitch, hit a two-run homer into left, 381 feet. For home run number 60, one more would tie the all-time record. There's a strike, and it's two and one.
Mark McGuire at the plate. Not only the 60 home runs, but 127 RBIs. Here it comes from Reyes. McGuire is gone. A 1-2 pitch that gets past him. And the inning comes to a close. McGuire with 60 home runs. One out of two on the day. And we will rejoin Joe Buck and Tim McCarver for McGuire's next at bat. In the meantime, we're in the bottom of the third inning at Shea Stadium. Ray Ordonez with a count of one ball, no strikes, facing Kevin Millwood. Millwood has allowed one base runner. That was a walk to John Olero with two outs in the first. One ball, one strike on Ordonez. Ordonez is hitting 247. 35 runs batted in a great shortstop. Is there a play at first base for Colburn? No. Well, speaking of Mark McGuire, here are a couple of fellows who are not chasing the Maris <laughs> record. Ordonez, no home runs in 429 at bats, and 326 at bats for Walt Weiss, who is sitting out with an injury now. The most consecutive at bats without hitting a home run career. 3,347 by Tommy Treveno, St. Louis, Philadelphia, Pittsburgh, Cincinnati, Boston, from September 24th, 1926 through October the 2nd, 1938, through the end of his career. He's making a bid there. It's a foul ball down the left field line. He hears us talking. <laughs> I'll show them. And let me tell you something, John. I know the feeling of going for a while without a home run. I didn't hit too many in my career. And you start worrying about it. You start saying, they keep that stat. You know, you talk about the guys that are hot and the guys that are not. They keep that stat. That's that's embarrassing. Ordonez chases a high pitch and is out on strikes. Four strikeouts for Kevin Millwood. Our overhead shots today are courtesy of the Goodyear Blimp Stars and Stripes based in Pompano Beach, Florida. This year, Goodyear is celebrating its 100th anniversary and 73rd consecutive year for its blimp operations. We're getting some great shots, guys. Thank you. What's it feel like, the ball off the bat, on a home run in a major league game? It's a wonderful feeling. It almost feels like it hadn't hit the bat. You know, you take a swing and you say, gee, if I had really swung out, it could have hit a long way. It doesn't work that way. It just seems to jump off the bat. Jones has one jump off the bat to center field, but not far enough. Andrew Jones is there to take care of Bobby Jones, two outs. I mean, that's the point. You really don't have to have the most muscular swing to hit a home run. No, you're not kidding. And when you think about the great home run hitters in the game, not, not including Babe Ruth, he was a great big man, but Hank Aaron and Willie Mays were not real big guys. They were 175 pounds. They weren't real big. They were just exceptionally strong in the hands and forearms. But now when you take a look at McGuire, now you're talking about a massive man. You know, back in 1965, there were only three guys in the major leagues who weighed over 230. And now, one, one of them was Frank Howard. Yeah, yeah, and that's, it's just, it's changing. The conditioning, the weight training is changing. But I remember seeing Frank Howard lose baseballs like McGuire is losing them right now, hitting those long, uh, high, towering, well, long Frank distance home runs. So strong, six foot, what was he, six foot eight, and he weighed about uh, 280 pounds. I was throwing batting practice to him as a young Dodger player, and I had a screen in front of me. He hit the ball so hard, it went through the screen and hit me in the shin. Ooh. And uh, I could understand how pitchers who stood out there with no screen and infielders stood close by when Frank was hitting, and they really had to be alive. Tony Phillips drives it to right field. Down the line. Off the wall. He's trying for two, and the throw from Tucker is going to make him go back to first. How about that play on the carom in right field by Michael Tucker? Good call, John. Tucker made a real nice play on this. This ball is on the inner part of the plate to Tony. You see him crouching. It's inside. See how he turns on it. Low and in. Now, a left-hander can get drop that head of that bat on it, which Tony did. Now, when the ball hits the wall here, Michael Tucker really makes a nice play. Puts the brakes on and plays the carom perfectly and throws a one-hop strike into second base to Ozzie Gian. And But was he in good fielding position for this watch? Perfect. Perfect. He can overrun that, too, and go too deep into the corner. It goes by you. Then it might be three bases yes. instead of two. A hard breaking ball. The slider for a strike to Edgardo Alfonso. So there's our first hit in the game. A single, a long single, off the right field wall, about 338 feet away from home plate.
Alfonso fouls one over our heads. 0 oh and 2. And here's Millwood set up for his fifth strikeout. You know, here's the contrast. That fastball there was a high fastball away from Alfonso at 91 miles an hour. Bobby Jones is throwing his fastball 84 to 86 for the Mets, but yet he's breaking bats because he's locating well. Tony Phillips is safe at first base. Phillips has one steal while being thrown out once for the Mets and has lost a step, or maybe two steps over the years. Mm -hmm. But the point you made, the Phillips factor, he is one of the smartest base runners out there. Yes, he is. And if you don't recognize the fact that he might sneak one on you, he will go. Think about Tony Phillips. And every now and then he takes some chances on the bases, but he knows how to play baseball. You, know, you can't fault a guy for being aggressive. And this guy has a fire in his stomach. Boy, he comes to play. Now, sometimes poor judgment. If a guy's over aggressive, you, you don't expect it from a veteran. Well, Tony just is really a good all around player, has really a feel for the game. I'm really happy he has been able to overcome his personal problems. Yes. That nearly cost him his career, and probably more importantly, his life. Yes. I mean, he was really at a, at a downtime in his life, but has been able to pick himself up. Put his life on the right track and make it back to the major leagues. Quite a story, I think. I agree with you. And I think the Mets uh, are playing the way they are since he's been here as part of his input. That's going to be caught at second base by Tony Graffinino. Alfonso is out. The top of the order is coming up for the Braves as they have Gian, Tucker, and Jones to bat against Bobby Jones. No score going to the fourth, and after the top of the first inning, Bob Apodaca on our sounds of the game talked about Ozzie Guillen, who hit a fly ball to center field. You get to a jam with Guillen, and you need a swing and a miss. You get into a jam with Guillen, and you need a swing and a miss. The pitch he chases is the curveballs that are a ball down and in, and the sliders down and in. He chases those pitches. You know, the slider that has the good tilt down, the one you had in Boston. But that was a pitch away from Guillen, or center away, and Guillen got a base hit leading off the fourth inning, the first base runner against Bobby Jones. Well, I think what happened here, Ozzie took pitches in the first at bat, and he swings at this first fastball right away, up right over the plate. And he gets the base hit to right. What Bob Apodaca was saying was if you get ahead of Ozzy and you got to get him out when you're ahead of him is make him swing at bad breaking balls low and in. And it's a very good call. That's where Ozzy has problems with two strikes. Two strikes he likes the ball up and hits it the other way. Now right there Bobby Jones was confirming that Ray Ordonez is going to cover second base if the ball is hit back to the mound. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. And a pitch out. Nothing's on. Ozzy again does not have a steal. He's been thrown out four times. Well, sometimes you look at that and you say, why are they pitching out when you look at Ozzy's stats? But it could be a hit and run situation. Bobby Cox has ideas how he wants to make his offense go and sometimes wants to get things started, especially right after a base hit. You try to jump the opposition. That's a foul ball on the right side. And there is some hitting room on the right side with first baseman John Olerud holding against Guillen. John, you made a very good point, too. The pitcher has to know who's covering at second base if the ball's hit back at him. Especially there's a little bit of an overshift on right now where they are shifting to the point where Odon or is playing almost over behind the base at shortstop. So Bobby Jones wanted to make sure you know your middle infielders play off the signs of the catcher but the pitcher wants to know who's covering. There's now, a step off. Now that's a good one John that, that is a good move the only people might say well how can he fake the first because you cannot face to fake the first off the rubber. He stepped back first with his right foot and then he faked over so he's able to do that. Michael Tucker acquired from the Kansas City Royals along with Keith Lockhart in a deal for Jermaine Dye and Jamie Walker March of 97. How's he keeping okay. his stomach at first base. Huh. He's never been afraid to get his uniform dirty. No he loves to play. He's a he's a fun guy to be around uh, when I had him with the White Sox. Now, wait a minute, that's not what you told me. Well he's fun to be around if he's on the field. Anytime I arrested him took him out of the lineup he drove me crazy. I said you're going to play every day. I can't stand it. You were here in the dugout. In fact, one time I looked up and he was with a cameraman out in center field in Anaheim, and the umpire stopped the game. And said, "What's your player doing out there?" I couldn't believe he was out there. Foul ball back to the screen. One ball and two strikes on Michael Tucker, a strikeout victim in the first inning. Now we're talking about Ozzie Guillen, and boy, it's a good thing that the Braves have him. Walt Weiser, All-Star shortstop, 
has had leg problems throughout the year, and Ozzie has filled in beautifully. And Ozzie's Rafael Belliard in the minor leagues has had leg problems. Right. Belliard got hurt, and there's Walt in the dugout. Ozzie, a former All-Star and Gold Glover with the White Sox, has really helped Bobby Cox's Braves. No swing, according to Bruce Fremming. Two balls, two strikes. And with Ozzie Guillen leaving the Chicago White Sox after 13 seasons, he was a rookie of the year when he came up after going from San Diego to Chicago. The White Sox decided to go with a 21 year old shortstop from Class A ball, Mike Caruso, but worked out well for Ozzie. He's on a wow. World Series contending team. Yes. He's always talking. We can hear him talking. He's talking to Pat Corrales. He talks to the umpire. He's talking to John O'Root. Two and two, nobody out. Michael Tucker, the batter, with Guillen on first. And this is a pretty good at bat going from Michael Tucker. Second time around the lineup after a pitcher is perfect the first nine. Mm -hmm. It's always interesting to see what adjustments are made by the batters and then to watch the pitcher make the adjustment. Boy, you got that right, John. The game within the game, you know, the pitcher catcher relationship, how they're going to pitch pitcher, uh, pitch hitters, especially a control pitcher who has got to hit his spots and change his speeds. Which is exactly what Bobby Jones is. You wonder how he's going to go the second time around. Ooh, that was a close call, and it goes Tucker's way, ball three. Well, we were talking about Bobby Jones being able to break bats, and one of the reasons, even though he's not throwing hard, one of the reasons is where he locates. And that last pitch to Tucker was, as you see, Bobby getting the, he wanted to make sure of the count from the umpire. But Bobby was trying to throw that ball right under his hands, right at the letters, and Tucker took it. I think Guillen takes off here. So does Jones. <laughs> Guillen is safe again at first base. The way Tucker's been able to foul pitches away, maybe mm -hmm. he can put the ball in play and perhaps keep the Braves out of a double play if indeed Tucker makes an out. Guillen does run. And it's hit in the air. Pat Corrales told Oz again to get back while Edgardo Alfonso dances with it and makes the play in fair territory. Now our Aflac trivia question for the day. Put on your thinking cap now. Who played for and managed both the Braves and the Mets? We'll have our answer to the Aflac trivia question shortly. You know the answer, don't you? Uh, that's a good one. Yeah, I do know the answer. One out, one on. Here's Chipper. Chipper Jones grounded out to second baseman Carlos Baerga the first time up. This guy, he, he just looks like he's having fun out there, playing with a lot of natural ability, but also a very hard worker. Yes. He's got a unique stance. He's got an open stance. He hits with a front tapping toe a lot like Sammy Sosa does. That's hit to Jones. He's going to go to Ordonez. And that's it. Ordonez went sliding in. Maybe he turned an ankle. Well, this throw was offline. Ordonez makes a nice play to, to catch the ball. The ball is not over the base. And we'll take a look at it again. Now, here's Chipper Jones swinging at this ball. Goes off the end of his bat. Bobby Jones bounces off the mound. He's a good fielder, but the throw is a little bit off. The timing is off on this. You see Ordonez has to go lean backwards. Here's the ball off the end of the bat. Bobby Jones gets the ball and throws it. It's a little better throw than I thought. It was almost like Ordonez got there too soon. The timing was not real good in that play. It was just a little bit back to the shortstop side and it caught him off balance. Or his back foot then slipped and he completely gave way. Or a little bit of both. Yes. Regardless, Jones is on first base. Chipper Jones at first. Two outs. Ryan Klusko popped up. Bayerga made the catch in the second inning. No score here in New York. With the runner going. And a strong throw. Save at second, a bang bang play. Chipper Jones has his 14th stolen base. And he had a good jump. Did have a good jump. He doesn't have blazing speed. Again, we'll talk about his instincts. See, now one, two, three, four steps before Bobby Jones delivered the ball. Mike Piazza makes a nice, strong throw right on the money, but there's not much you can do about that if the base runner has that kind of jump. Now, that is really, that's inside baseball. It's also a great camera shot. 14 steals. Thrown out three times. Jones is in scoring position for Ryan Klusko. Good breaking ball. One ball and one strike. This situation, this is where a championship team opens a ball game. 
where it's been a tight game. 50 pitches already for Bobby Jones. 31 for strikes. He was perfect the first time around the lineup. But to get a steal with two outs is where a championship team finds a way to get a run in. Yes, the good clubs are the ones that score the base runners with two outs. Plesko has been struggling. That's out of play off to the left. Now, if you watch Plesko, he's got the kind of the stance of the 90s, the open stance where the front foot is farther away from the plate than the back foot, and then he closes up. And this year, he hasn't been generating the same power. And a guy who starts with an open stance and then comes back over the plate to the plate has to drive the ball the other way. And Klesko used to do that, but lately he has not been showing the kind of power that he had in the prior two years. One ball, two strikes with one on and two outs. That one goes Klesko's way. That looked pretty good. Wow, that ball was close. Very close. As you see Ryan Klesko's hit zone, he likes the ball typically. Most left-handers like it down in the in the strike zone, except the mistake pitches up over the middle. He can get to those. It's because he does start open and then closes up. Two and two. Three and two. And after Klusko in the lineup, it's Javi Lopez. Javi Lopez of 32 home runs. Javi Lopez is the hitter. It is extremely hot in the Braves lineup. Bobby Jones would like to get Ryan Klesko here, and you notice that they're trying to pitch him inside because he does close up. Here's a full count pitch. Foul ball straight back. The Mets one game behind the Cubs in the wild card race. The Giants are three games out. Ryan Klesko, career against Bobby Jones. Saw his numbers. You know, here's where we were talking about, John. See, the, the front foot is open, and then he dives over the plate, and that's why you got to pitch him right inside there. Because by then, he's locked up. Another 3-2 pitch. Two on with two outs. The walk is the first allowed by Bobby Jones. That's your Bobby Lopez. Bobby Lopez. Let's go to Bob Apodaca. Bobby Jones checking now with second baseman Carlos Baerga. Perhaps confirming the signs with two men on. Yeah, that's always a concern for the middle infielders. They want to make sure what signs you're using with a runner at second base because you use sequence of signs. We will be checking in with Bob Apodaca throughout the day. We we'll bring you sounds of the game in the inside part of the game here on Fox Sports. No score. We're in the fourth. Strike one. And now Bob Apodaca talking about Klusko and Bobby Jones. Now, if we get into a jam, Klusko lifetime is Jensen is pretty high. Yeah. Yeah. And he owned him in the minors because he got his change up down. Fastball down, busted him. Yeah, owned him. Owned him. But there was Jones pitching Klesko carefully, and a balk has been called, moving Chipper Jones to third and Ryan Klesko to second base. Wally Bell signaled for the, the balk. Bobby Jones kind of did a little jig on the mound there as he came set. I thought I was seeing things. Now, here we'll take a look at Here comes Bobby Jones is coming set. Now, watch him wiggle as he comes set. There it was. See the little wiggle just before he went to go to the plate. You know, it's amazing. You're looking at a player, and I thought I blinked. I saw that funny little movement just before he started to deliver the ball. Yeah, but throughout your life, you're used to watching the pitcher from about 62 feet away. <laughs> In center field, Brian McRae. Shy at the track, he runs it down, retiring Lopez. One hit, a walk, two left. Olaru, Piazza, McRae, they're coming up. Oh, he gets 341 is leading off. Trailing Larry Walker by four points and goes after the first pitch and bounces it to Graffinino. One pitch, one out. Kevin Millwood and Bobby Jones are working in a stand on the bottom of the fourth. And here's Mike Piazza coming up.
Listen closely, Jeff. Did, did you hear any boos? No, not this week. They're very pleased with what he has done. Boy, the first time up, they, they roared when he came to the plate, and they should be. This guy is a fine player. Came way out here two weeks ago, the play he made when he dove in the dugout. I mean, showed how the guy comes to play. First 1,000 hits career. Only Babe Ruth has a higher average and more home runs. How about that company, huh? That's and a, a favorable sign. response in the stands today. Great sign. Once they accept you here, Jeff, that's the thing yes. about New York. I think what he got caught in, Todd Hundley is such a popular player and such a, a the heart and soul of this ball club for the last couple of years. I think Mike got caught in that because Todd is such a favorite. Piazza swings to a high fastball and he's out on strikes. Major League leaders in batting average 90 through through 93 through 1998. Tony Gray at 363 and then Mike Piazza 334. Yeah. You're talking about a guy who'll never get a uh, a base hit in the infield by running it out. He doesn't run well as most catchers don't. So that shows when what he hit 362 last year with no leg hits. Ryan McRae lists this one down the left field line and it's going to go out of play. Well, let's go to our Aflac trivia question and answer. The question for today, who played for and managed both the Braves and the Mets? Speaking of a catcher who didn't leg out many hits in an MVP season, Joe Torre. The years that he managed and played for the Mets and the Braves. And Joe Torre, the manager now of the Yankees in his Mets uni, and one of the great guys in the game. Now on the mound, Bobby Cox out there with the trainer, home plate umpire Wally Bell. Milford is talking favorably with the group. Ozzy Gaines telling everybody, go ahead, get off the field. <laughs> Let's play. He's all right. Bobby Cox seems satisfied. And here's what happened. Uh, you can see him bend over on that last pitch and grab his groin. And there's a base hit through the hole at short. Ryan McCray with a wide turn. He has a single with two outs. John, you see this uh, happen occasionally if a pitcher who falls off to one side or the other hits his foot funny in the dirt. Because remember, every pitcher has their own unique stride distance, so the hole develops out in front of each pitcher. And if you hit on the side of the hole, a little off balance, you really feel it in your legs. And, and up in the upper leg, up in the groin area, you can really feel it on a misstep. Lenny Harris is a battery lined out to center field in the second inning. Now there's the hole you see in the dirt. You'll see pitchers go out and smooth those holes over so that they make sure they hit in the same spot each time. But you can see Millwood now he just kind of pulled his pants down a little bit trying to get away from where he feels that in his leg. He also when he delivers the ball and we'll see it here he falls over toward first base. Here's the delivery hits the stiff leg and see him rocket kind of lean over toward first base and he felt it again so he's going to have to be careful. The 2 0 pitch coming all the way back to the screen. That's going to put McCray in scoring position. John, he's really feeling this. That's why he has not thrown the ball away he wants it. You pitch with your legs. If you don't have a solid base under you, you pull up short and you don't deliver the ball properly. You don't finish it properly. Leo Mazzoni, the pitching coach, really concerned about him. But this look what his last pitch is. That is really wild. That's because he didn't follow through. His leg is bothering him. With Glavin, Smoltz, Maddox, Nagel, and Millwood. That's a solid group. Yes. Goes as a pass ball. Safe at second base, Brian McRae. Now see, even that almost got away. And watching Millwood, he keeps grabbing at his pants. He feels this. And if he can get through this inning, they might make sure in the dugout. Because if you sit for a while and that stiffens up, boy, if you get a groin injury for a pitcher, that can take It's like those rib injuries. You know, you just never know how long they'll take to heal. Lenny Harris. 
A strike, and Harris was ready to take his base. Three and one with two outs. Lenny Harris with five home runs has hit all five as a member of the Mets. He's playing in his 56th game with the Mets. Bob Valentine. And Lenny Harris looks to the home plate umpire Wally Bell, making sure that's ball four. And that was well out of the strike zone. Two walks allowed by Millwood. You know, I might be all wrong, John, because uh, obviously Bobby Cox and Leo Mazzoni know their own pitcher much better than I do, but all of a sudden he doesn't look like the same pitcher. He's not fish finishing pitches off the strike that he threw that was one that was uh, Lenny Harris's questioning look was only 86 miles an hour. This guy throws much harder than that. 61 pitches now for Millwood. And he keeps pulling on the pant leg. Yeah, I, I think he's hurting. See, there's another fastball right there. He didn't finish it off. Only 86 miles an hour. He's been throwing 90, 91. He looks like a pitcher just trying to get through the inning, trying to record the third out of the fourth. You know what you're seeing. He's not finishing any of the pitches off. When you look at a delivery, the pitcher hits on his front foot. He gets out over the delivery. Now watch him here. He'll go out, but he'll, he'll stop. See him stand up and then flip over. He's not even finishing the ball off. Bayerga hit a fly ball to center field in a 1-2-3 second inning. Pretty good movement down and away, but that's ball two. Yeah, and that's not the kind of pitcher he is. When you start to see a power pitching four-seamer, cross-seamer pitcher starting to throw balls that are sailing like that, it means his delivery's messed up. He's fallen off to first, and then his arm is flopping out, and the ball's shooting over to the right away from left-handers. Bayerga with ball three. Leo Mazzoni rocking back and forth in the dugout. Watching the proceedings here, after two outs, McCray is singled. Harris has walked. As Bobby Cox studies his pitcher, Kevin Millwood. Bayerga fouls that out of play. Bayerga has been a good hitter through his career. And look at what he's doing with two outs and runners in scoring position. Just under 300 while batting 272 overall. But he's concentrating with men on. It really is, especially from the left side of the plate. He's a much better hitter left-handed. And when he gets ahead of the count, you know, he's a smart enough hitter. He knows what to do with it. He struggled for a while coming to the Mets, but on the left side of the plate, he has been really swinging the bat well. That's ball four. The bases are loaded. All after a ground out and a strikeout. McCray at third, Harris at second, Bayer get first. Three walks for Kevin Millwood. Two this inning. You know, we're talking about the physical side of pitching, pitching that it's conceivable that he hurt himself, that he pulled something in the upper thigh and the groin area but also from the mental side it affects you you're, you're afraid of it hurting again so you don't pitch in your normal delivery he is not throwing like he did before that pitch that he threw that was a foul ball down the left field line by Brian McCray well, like he did against Ray Ordonez in the third striking him out and there's strike one now there's the first pitch that he's thrown hard and he went straight at the plate it's like he said now out of the windup now he's in the windup that he went and threw the ball hard he had been in the stretch like he could not get the ball to the plate the way he wanted it. Ordonez does not have a slam. Just off the outside part of the plate. One ball, one strike, and there's no place to put Ray Ordonez. Well, all of a sudden now he looks, on the last two pitches, he looks like he's okay. But it could be he's out of the windup and he's able to get his legs under him. He's not rushing and putting any strain on his legs. Dancing down the line from third, Brian McCray. Strike on the outside corner. Ardonias didn't like it. One and two. No one throwing in the bullpen for the Atlanta Braves. But you know, you can get away with that because if he is hurting. Injury situation. Yes. In center field, here's Andrew Jones. The bases were left loaded with Ordonez flying out, meaning Bobby Jones is going to lead off when the Mets bat in their half of the fifth. Andrew Jones will lead off in the fifth for Atlanta.
Run race is heating up. Step up to the plate and play the Pepsi Major League Baseball Home Run Countdown. Go to Winston. Thanks for joining us on this Saturday afternoon. Bobby Jones is pitching today for the Mets. And a drive to left center field. And that's going to leave the yard a home run for Andrew Jones. His 26th of the season. Well, we talked about the tools that this young man has. He can hit a fastball a long way and very quick bat. As most young hitters have, they'll have trouble with breaking balls. But if he gets up there and gets the pitch he's looking for, he can crush it. Here's the pitch from Bobby Jones. High fastball. You don't want to give a good young power hitting right-handed hitter a high fastball. Or that can result. Greg Colbrun. Slider outside to Colbrun. Rounded out to the second baseman. In the third inning. Bobby Jones worked through the lineup. Three up, three down the first three innings. There he gets a strike. One ball, one strike. Bobby Jones is three and seven career against Atlanta. And that's a hit by pitch. Goldman didn't do much to get out of the way of that one either. You know, that's very interesting. There is a rule in the book, of course. If a hitter doesn't make an attempt to get out of the way of a pitch, you well, can you keep him at the plate. you were involved in something like that, weren't you? Boy, that Don Drysdale shutout streak continued when Dick Dietz was hit in the ninth inning with the bases loaded on a pitch like that. But what normally the rule of thumb is, is if it's a breaking ball, the umpires will let him go because they'll say they don't know where it's going to break. But, you know, Bobby Jones had a complaint there. Watch Greg Colburn stick his left elbow into this. When he sees the hanging breaking ball inside, he kind of leans his shoulder in and his elbow out just a little bit. Uh-huh. That is one of those questionable ones. But since it was a breaking ball, they'll let it go. Tony Graffini know the batter. Is there something about that first base position with the Braves and being hit by pitches? I don't know. There must be like bullseye on that guy over there. But a lot has to do with the kind of hitters you have. Hitters that are open and dive in and go into the ball. Colburn does the same thing. Not as with as exaggerated a stance. But Galarraga gets hit by pitches plenty and is serving a suspension. Mm -hmm. Right now for charging the mound against the Dodgers. Tony Graffinino batting. Nobody out. No play for John Olerud on the right side. Graffinino has popped out to short today. One to nothing on a home run by Andrew Jones. And in case you just joined us in St. Louis, the first at bat today for Mark McGuire produced his 60th home run. He hit his 60th home run in his 141st game. He hit his 60th home run in his 141st game. The so fastest to ever get to 60 ever. home runs. Remember all the talk about Roger Maris and the asterisks about his not hitting, hitting the home run that broke the record within the old 154 game schedule. Foul ball back our way, and what a different place and a different time. For Roger Maris had so many people pulling against him, including teammates who were rooting for Mickey Mantle at the time, his own teammate. And to do it in New York in the house that Ruth built to break that record had to be very difficult on Roger Maris. Baseball throughout baseball have been pulling for Mark McGuire and Sammy Sosa to do it. Not any uh, criticism at all of Roger Maris, but just the two wonderful guys. These are two super guys, McGuire and Sosa. They've handled it so well. That's a strike. Graffinino gets the ring up. Recently on In the Zone, we saw how the Atlanta Braves summer travel almost never ends as the Braves hop on planes and buses. We tagged along for the ride to see how major leaguers deal with major travel, not to mention lots of heavy luggage. So check out In the Zone, Saturdays on Fox. In the Zone! Jeff Torborg is in the zone today. <laughs> on his game and Bobby Jones is trying to get out of this inning with no more damage throw to first and Millwood was squaring to bunt with one out. Well this is one of those fake plays where the fake the first base and John Olwood faked in like he was running in for the bunt and then backtrack for the pickoff. A bunt in the air. Piazza can't get it the ball goes to the screen. 
Now, here are the different strategies that you have in the two leagues. Of course, with the pitcher hitting in the National League, you'll see a lot of bunting even with one out, and that's what Bobby Cox is doing. He's trying to get that runner in scoring position, Colburn over to second base by bunting with his pitcher. In the American League, of course, with no pitcher hitting, you never see anybody bunt with one out. Mark McGuire is on deck in St. Louis in the bottom of the fifth inning. The Cardinals are leading Cincinnati four to nothing, and McGuire has hit his 60th home run today. And we'll take you to St. Louis for his at bat. And let's go to St. Louis right now and rejoin Joe Buck and Tim McCarver as Mark McGuire is coming to bat looking for home run number 61. We would like to welcome those of you who have been watching the Atlanta Braves and the New York Mets. Mark McGuire in the first inning hit a two run home run to hit 60 home runs. Tying the former record. Which was held for 34 years by Babe Ruth. He's one away from tying Roger Maris. Bases empty one out. And a swing and a miss for strike one. McGuire is in a two run homer and struck out his next time now facing Remlinger for the first time today. Strike two. And Remlinger's come right after him. With high fastballs, similar to the way Pete Harnish, the right hander, pitched Mark McGuire last night. A bevy of balls above the waist. On 0 and 2, McGuire strikes out three consecutive pitches from the left hander. Two out, McGuire's one for three. In the meantime, Brian McCray in center field made a Willie Mays like catch to keep another run from scoring. And here it is on the drive by Kevin Millwood. This is an unbelievably tough catch to make because, as you can see, it drifts back over his head, and he has to not only reach over his head, but kind of backward for the ball. Now two outs. Ozzie Gian going after the first pitch the last time, got a single. There's a breaking ball for a ball and a stolen base for Greg Colburn. Talk about picking the right pitch to run on. Yes. You know, it was amazing just before that steal to watch McCray go for that ball, but there was something that really stood out. The NY on his hat is the same design as the NY in the Giants' hats when Willie Mays made that great catch in 54. That NY that you see is the old Giant logo NY. The Yankee logo is the Y is up, stands right. through the top of the N, and it just kind of, oh, you say, hey, wait a minute, back to 1954. And who was your favorite player? When Willie you were Mays. Up? So little things like that stick in your mind. Boy, right? does it ever, yep. Ozzie Gian with a one ball, one strike count. One out of two for Gian. On the ground toward Vierga. He throws him out. A home run by Andrew Jones. Greg Colburn is left on. Halfway through the game, the Braves are up one to nothing. One to nothing, the score. Favor the Braves. And today's aerial shots are courtesy of the Goodyear Blimp Stars and Stripes based in Pompano Beach. At the controls is pilot Dan Thomas from Endeavor, Wisconsin. How about this weather today, Jeff? Why don't we just bottle it and keep it all the way through the World Series? We have coverage of the World Series on Fox Sports today. Well, McCray made a heck of a catch in center field, or it could have been uh, two nothing, maybe three nothing ball game by the end of the top of the fifth. Now yeah. Bobby Jones, the pitcher, will lead off the bottom of the fifth, trying to help himself here. McCray can play in the outfield. Some question is arm strength, but really, how many great arms are there in the outfield right now? Well, not in left field normally or center field. Right field, you want the best arm you have on the club out exactly, there, and you can get away in center. How many of those guys are? Yeah, there are some, and when you see them, they really do stand out. They do. You know what was so interesting about the catch that he made? It was a bunt situation. They, the Braves had Millwood bunting, and so now Brian McRae was sneaking in just a little bit, playing shallow because he felt he could back up if there was a play at second when this ball went over his head. Andrew Jones and he can throw some runners out in center field from center field mm -hmm. 
Bobby Jones or Bobby Cox said that Jones is probably the best center fielder he's ever seen and what a statement a teammate of Madeline Maris with the New York Yankees. Oh you're not kidding and remember how young this kid is he plays it so nonchalantly as we mentioned. That's a strike. Three and two on Bobby Jones, the New York Mets pitcher. You remember Willie Mays was famous for the basket catch. Did you ever notice how Andrew Jones goes after the ball? He kind of sets his glove in front of his left shoulder. Kind of just sets it there and then catches it like he's letting it drop into it. He kind of glides while he's out there. Yes. Though. That's the point you made. He's not bouncing up and down. No. The head doesn't move and the eyes don't move. Oz again down to one knee. Bobby Jones is out. Top of the order now on Tony Phillips. Baseball's top three home run hitters, Aaron, Ruth, and Mays, have a rather unusual link. Each ended his career in the same city where he started. Aaron started with the Milwaukee Braves and finished with the Brewers. Ruth began with the Boston Red Sox and finished up with the Boston Braves. Mays began with the Giants here in New York and ended with the New York Mets. Tony Phillips, one out of two, a strikeout and a single. But I think with the home run chase, and, uh, and it has been a real history lesson for baseball, learning all about Roger Maris, all about Babe Ruth when he hit his 60 home runs. A line shot to second to Graffinino. Phillips has hit the ball hard the last two times up, singled off the wall in the third, and then hit an atom ball right at Tony Graffinino. Well, he'll be commenting on that one. Because when they strike him out, he goes back to the dugout and he'll be working the pitcher over. And on a line drive like that, I don't know what he'll say, but when his first at bat for the Mets this year, he struck out. And this is, first of all, before we get into that, here's a line drive. See how he drops his hands and gets to that ball? It's a bullet hit right at Graffinino. I guard Alfonso bats with two outs. And his first at bat for the Mets this year, and I'm talking about the Phillips, he struck out against Carlos Perez, and he went back to the dugout, cussing Perez out. His teammates were so shocked the way he was yelling at the pitcher who just struck him out that they started to wonder what's going on with this guy and this fire that he has just has turned this ball club on. Well, making it out is a very personal thing to Tony. He doesn't like it. <laughs> and I've always said he never met a strike he ever liked. Well, he learned that from Ricky Henderson and that stance he uses that real crouch. He learned that from Ricky Henderson when they were teammates with the great Oakland teams in the late 80s. But he said this particular clubhouse reminds him of those Oakland clubhouses where the guys cared about winning, cared about each other. Well, you know, it takes the good clubs takes a little bit of ribbing. It, you don't have to have the manager and the coaches out there telling the players how they should play the game. You got a veteran like Tony Phillips will get in your your head quickly if you don't play the game the way he thinks you should play. A drive down the left field line, foul. That was Alfonso's own version of the tomahawk chop. Well, Alfonso's a good hitter. You know, he's he struggled this year, but he's starting to come alive. But last year he hit 315. But he has picked a good time to come alive, where the Mets need everything going their way down the stretch. They have to play these Braves another series in Atlanta. Well, it really doesn't matter who you play. It really could be tough on you, but you're right. When you go against a great pitching staff, they have to play to play Houston, and Houston plays them tough. And a tap. Third baseman Chipper Jones. He'll eat it. He will not risk a bad throw. That's an infield hit for Alfonso, and John Holerud has a chance to come up in the fifth. Jones was playing so deep he did not want to take the chance of rifling one down the right field line. Now you can see the ball's right off the end of the bat and he's hustling right out of the box. A right handed hitter who sees that ball going on. He knows he's just chopped it. Uh, he smells a base hit. It's amazing when hitters smell base hits how all of a sudden you get a, a step faster on the way down the line. What do you think is tougher going down the stretch playing a team that is a, a top contender a chance at a wild card or a division or a team that's out of it just playing for next year. Here's a long one to right field by Olerud, and it's a gutter. Olerud connects for his 19th home run, and the Mets go up by a run. Uh, 
Well, John Olu's been doing this all year for the Mets. He's the quiet man in the ball club. He's making a run for the batting title. He's got one of the most beautiful swings you'll ever see in baseball. He's already run a, won a batting title in Toronto. He's trying to become only the second man in this century to win a batting title in each league. But Olrud, you make a mistake on him, especially down in the strike zone, they hit it out of the ballpark, and that's what happened right there. Now, here's the pitch. See where it is. It's inside, and it's just below the belt. And Olrud just gets the head of the bat out. And a little swinging bunt by Alfonso allowed him first base. Just a little chop toward third, an infield hit. Brought Olerud to the plate, and he delivered. Olerud's 19th home run, a 2-1 to one lead for New York. And there's a drive to right field. Michael Tucker on the move. And the catch. Shin high retiring Mike Piazza. The dugout reaction on John Olerud's 19th home run of the year. And after five in New York, the Mets are up 2-1. to one. Two to one Mets on John Olerud's home run is 19th of the year and Olerud is second in the league to Larry Walker in batting. Olerud has raised his average to 342. Trying to become the second player in Major League history to win a batting title in both leagues. And a ball here. Bobby Jones on the mound facing Michael Tucker Chipper Jones Ryan Klesko we're in the sixth inning and this has been a good game today that was a nice pitch fading down and away John you said earlier in the game about two clubs that don't beat themselves and have good pitching field the ball and you can see the kind of pitching we're getting today that was a beautiful pitch from Bobby Jones kind of a sinker away from Tucker in right field Lenny Harris with the over the shoulder catch. Tucker is out one down. When you think about the way these guys played each other last night, two to one game. Tom Glavin against Al Leiter. Tremendous game. One by a home run. Two run homer by Piazza. That's the kind of baseball these guys play because when you look at the Mets, the Mets are only eighth in the league in batting. But their earned run average is second in the league. Or actually third in the league now, and their feeling is second, tied for second. One strike to count on Chipper Jones. Chipper today has been on on a force play. He has a steal. A ball and a strike to the third baseman for Atlanta. 0 for 2 officially. And batting 313. As you see, he has a couple of ground balls. 100 runs batted in for Chipper Jones. John, I was talking about the kind of stance he uses. You see that open stance, and he does a little dance with his right foot. He brings it back to the plate, taps it on the ground. It's a timing device and keeps him back. And it's something that Sammy Sosa, of course, we've heard so much about Sammy, has done this year with his stance. Instead of committing with the front side early, you use your front side and that stepping motion to keep you back. Over the shift with Ordonez playing almost behind second base. Jones hit the ball over his head. Now this is what we're talking about from the side. He there's a wide stance. Now he'll bring this foot back, tap it down here, and then go to hit. And then he hits a bullet out away from him, right through. Now here's his foot. Will come in. See how he steps in, and then he goes toward the pitcher. It keeps his weight back. You have to go back first before you go forward, and that's his little trick to getting it done. As I mentioned, Sammy Sosa has developed that this year, and it's really helped him, obviously. Ryan Klesko. The infield a double play depth now. But by Aragon Ordonez playing up the middle. Ordonez is not that far from playing directly behind second again. There's a fake throw by Piazza. Lesko walked and was left at second base and here's how the Mets set up their defense with the outfield playing Klesko to pull the ball and the infield playing about the same way and there's Ordonez. It was interesting that Mike Piazza came out there like he was throwing the reason for that is when there's a big left handed hitter in front of a catcher very often you lose sight of the base runner 
So Mike came out thinking that when he lost sight of Chipper Jones at first base behind Klusko that he might be running. Obviously, he's already stolen a base in this game. It's on his mind. Foul tip into Piazza's mitt. Klusko had a home run swing. Well, remember what Bob Apodaca said in our sounds of the game that Klesko has owned Bobby Jones from the time they were in the minor leagues. One of the reasons he said was he hits all his pitches that are down. Klesko being a low ball hitter Bobby Jones has changed up that last one was a fastball up in the zone and they've been trying to pound him at the letters this whole game. We were talking about this when Old Root hit his home run and I was looking at the Mets schedule where after a games with Atlanta tomorrow Monday the Mets go to Philadelphia three Montreal three Houston three then Florida at home for three Montreal for two and at Atlanta the last three the 25th to the 27th two and one on Fusco and safe at first base is Chipper Jones what do you think is more dangerous though Atlanta or Houston Atlanta Houston or the other teams that aren't the contenders that are just playing out the season and guys are playing for jobs or to make an impression you watch out because two of those teams are on turf and you play that's a different game the Phillies and, and Montreal that's a different game on turf There's a half swing by Klesko the last thing you do John is take anybody for granted don't ever do that or you'll get your lunch it is one of those things you can play real tough for an example if you played a great series against the Braves now last night the Mets won the first time against the Braves this year right you leave this series and then go against a team you think that you can relax against you'll blow all the stuff that you've done in this series so you've got to play them and the old cliche one at a time but by gosh you can't take anybody for granted years ago historically there was something that happened here in New York we'll get to that after this pitch let's go fouls it the other way the Giants were running with the the Cardinals for the pennant race and the giant manager when asked about Brooklyn the Dodgers were struggling I believe they were in last place and when asked about the Dodgers he made a smart comment I think it was it Bill Terry that said it are they still in the league well not only were they still in the league they came against the Giants and they beat them and the Cardinals won the pennant so you never say that and you don't think that way a ball outside to Klesko. Three balls, two strikes, one out. Is Jones moving on this pitch? I would think he, he might be in this because, first of all, we mentioned how difficult it is to see the base runner for a catcher with a left-hander. And Klesko's a big guy, so he's in the way. And Chipper Jones is a smart base runner. Has already stolen a base. I think maybe you might, even though there's a chance for a strikeout. Jones draws a throw. A home run by Andrew Jones in the top of the fifth and a two run homer by John Olerud in the bottom of the fifth and Olerud hit what the Toronto Blue Jays wanted him to hit mm -hmm. more of. And they let him go on. They move Olerud to New York. A ball high. Busco takes his base. Jones was running and he pulls up at second. Two walks allowed by Bobby Jones. Jones is gone is required five innings with the lead to be eligible for a win. And now the Braves are threatening with Chipper Jones at second. Plus go at first Javi Lopez hit the ball hard to center field for an out in the fourth grounded out in the second. Now well, we talked about Javi Lopez being so strong and look at his numbers 32 home runs 97 RBIs chasing Joe Torre for all time record of catchers by catchers I should say. Joe had 36 home runs as a catcher but Javi Lopez for a number of years has been considered one of the strongest if not the strongest guys on the Brave Club and he has great power straight away. And he hits the ball straight away into center field. Chipper Jones is coming around and he's going to score. It's a tie game. Javi Lopez has 98 runs batted in. Javi Lopez hitting 370 with runners in scoring position this season. The fourth best in the National League comes through with an RBI single. We're knotted at two. Well, this pitch they're trying to get out of way. See, Mike Piazza set up out of way. They got it there with a little much too much height and with great extension from Javi Lopez. Bob Apodaca talking to Bobby Jones now and Mike Piazza on the mound. How about the two offensive catchers we have here today? Javi Lopez and Mike Piazza you're talking about two great big strong guys handling very good 
pitching staff. Javi Lopez just continues to get better, and so does this man, Mike Piazza. A single, a walk, and a single. Andrew Jones is the batter now, and let's take a look at what happened with Jones leading off the fifth inning. That pitch was up, and then it was out. <laughs> You know, I've never seen so many balls hit that far over the bleachers here in this ballpark. That is where Piazza hit his home run last night. Almost went out to the parking lot. One he hit in the parking lot a couple weeks ago. I've never seen so many balls go that far here. There's a little dribbler up the third baseline. And it's going to stay fair. Andrew Jones is on. Plusco made it to third. Lopez to second. The bases are loaded with one out. The third hit in the inning. Well, it happened just before all Roots home run. Here's a pitch right in his hands. He breaks the bat. And you couldn't throw the ball down the line any better than that if you wanted to make sure you had a ball go down there and stay fair and not be played on. Here's Alfonso hoping it goes foul. Tried a Lenny Randall trick years ago. Got down on his hands and knees and tried to blow it foul. Now the bases are full of Atlanta Braves with a run in in the sixth inning. A tie game at 2 2. The Braves about hit the Mets 5 4. An airless game. Greg Colbrum was hit by a pitch and left on in the fifth. 0 for 1. Bobby Jones is on the spot right now and Colbrum calls time. Colbrum's a good hitter, John. He came up through the Montreal organization he was originally a very highly thought of catcher but he hurt his throwing arm but he can hit you can see the numbers with the bases loaded he loves the ball down over the plate inside to him and he wasn't making much of an effort to get out of the way of that one after being hit by the pitch in the fifth when I first saw him and you can see the the Mets bullpen the left hander is Beltran the right hander is Tam and these guys are good hitters good hitter when you're thinking about a Colburn really look for the pitches that they want and lay off the other pitches no place to put Greg Colburn two balls no strikes and the pot is getting deeper and deeper and thicker and thicker for Bobby Jones and maybe that would sound like a trite comment while I just said but the good hitters focus and they also have a game plan I always felt that Colburn knew what he was looking for. He didn't go after a lot of bad balls. Well, to illustrate what you're talking about, in the game with Maddox facing Randy Johnson, Maddox left the pitch center of the plate for Biggio. There's your good hitter. Yes. Hit a mistake out of the park. Yes. Yeah, the good hitters, yeah, they, they really have a game plan. In fact, if you ever talk to a, a real good hitter, you ask him, well, what were you thinking in this situation? Well, the first thing they'll say was, I know what the pitcher was trying to do, and I was looking for a certain pitch, and he took all the others. Now, whether Colburn will be able to do that, he's definitely in a hitter's count here. Two balls, no strikes. And Bobby Jones has got to come in. Now, normally, if you're a pitcher and catcher in this situation, you try to throw a strike low and away. Very difficult to get a strike inside. So if you have no place to put the hitter, you then try to throw a fastball right down on the outside part of the plate and hope the hitter will pull off the ball. Hit a ground ball, possibly double play. One out, bases loaded. Time called by Colburn. Colburn has two career grand slams. Brian Klusko is the runner at third. Javi Lopez at second. Andrew Jones at first. Olerud plays off the bag. Andrew Jones gets a big lead. Ball three. Three balls and no strikes. Another wide one, and the Braves will regain their lead. We're going to take you to St. Louis to Mark McGuire's at bat in the seventh inning. Now let's rejoin Joe Buck and Tim McCarver. Well, Tim, we'd like to welcome those of you who have been watching the Atlanta Braves and the New York Mets. We're going to have a double switch here, which will give people around here more time to wonder if they are standing in anticipation of a McGuire at bat only to watch him draw an intentional walk. I think this is uh, to Jack McKeon's credit if he's going to bring the right hander in to pitch to McGuire instead of allowing the left hander to walk him because under normal circumstances you'd have to walk him but these are anything but normal circumstances. 
Hudak. I think with Hudak coming in the game, I think you'll pitch to him. If they intentionally walk McGuire, as we said in the open, this place might come down. He has not been intentional, intentionally walked in since August the 8th. We'll come back. Hudak against McGuire. And Tony Phillips can't catch the drive by Cobra, and the throw comes in too late to get Lopez. On to third, Andrew Jones. Second and third, the Braves have plated three runs in the sixth inning to go up 4-2 over the Mets. John, this was a tough play. Tony Phillips had to flip his sunglasses down. He was getting near the wall, and it is a very difficult play. Now, here's the pitch. 3-2 count. Now, base is loaded. No place to put Coleman. The ball's in the middle of the plate. He hits this ball well. Tony Phillips flips the glasses down, and now he knows he's near the wall. Now, remember, this guy's been playing right field till lately. He loses the glove. It gets stuck against the wall here. This is a tough play. Yes, it's catchable, but it also is a very okay. tough play. Look at his glove on the wall still. Now, pitch out. No bunt on for Tony Graffinino. And you might say, why would you why would you pitch out here? Because Bobby Cox loves to squeeze right after something spectacular happens and you have a runner at third base. He might do it on this pitch. He just might. The runner at third base is Andrew Jones. He can get down the line. All Graffinino has to do is put the ball in play if that happens. Time called by Graffinino. Well, is it amazing that it happened for both the Mets and that little chop swinging bunt down the third base line just before the home run by Olrood, and it happened to the Braves or for the Braves. Now the infield comes up. And a foul ball back to the screen. One ball, one strike. Okay, there's a little different strategy. The infield started back, and then it raced up to an uptight position. Why would you do that? Well, that happens a lot of times, especially if you have the eighth place hitter. You might try something tricky and try to fool the hitter. We're going to be going back to St. Louis shortly for Mark McGuire's at bat. The Reds just made a double switch. We'll check in with Tim McCarver and Joe Buck as soon as McGuire is ready to go, and they tell me they are ready. Back to Bush Stadium. In the double switch, Pat Watkins takes over in right field and now pitching. John Hudek, and it looks like they'll pitch to him, which backs up what you said as they bring in the right-hander. I think this uh, gives Jack McKeon a way out in this ball game, and this is back to Mark McGuire. Now we'll have to wait and see if he gets anything to hit, but there's no intentional pass here to McGuire, who has walked 146 times in 1998 and hit 60 home runs. Second and third, one out, and there's a strike. It's 1-1. One one. McGuire has struck out on high fastballs twice, and Hudek has a good high fastball. Here's the 1-1. One one. That had a wrinkle on it outside, 2-1. and one. McGuire has hit a two-run homer, struck out in his next two at-bats. Eight multi home run games this season for McGuire. Second and third, one out. Over the outside corner, McGuire looks back, doesn't say anything. It's two and two. Home plate umpire, Larry Poncino. The runners. Kelly and Mabry aboard with one out for Big Mac. Three and two. Will Hudak challenge McGuire on three and two? Good pitch, and McGuire spoiled it to stay alive. Slider on the outside corner, foul back by Mark McGuire. I'm sure John Hudak won't allow himself the butt. 
you would think a guy would wonder if every time he lets the ball go if it's going to result in home run in this case number 61. He hasn't pitched like that. He's made some nasty pitches on McGuire. Second and third one out. A full count on Mark McGuire. For the third consecutive time, Hudak came after him. McGuire, one out of four for the day. And they've been getting him out up. At Shea Stadium in New York, Kevin Millwood is batting with two outs and runners at second and third. His Braves have given him a 4-2 lead to work with. Maybe he can get more with a hit here. He has only four hits this season. He tried, though, in the fifth inning, sending the ball to deep center field and over-the-shoulder catch by Brian McCray took hit number five of the season away from Millwood. 100 pitches now for Bobby Jones. And that's a foul ball. Foul ball to play. Tell you, John, he's had some good swings. You mentioned the ball that when he was looking like he was bunting the ball, he almost drove over Brian McRae's head. But prior to that, in the at-bat before, he hit a ball down the right field line pretty well. He can get to that high fastball. He's like a lot of pitchers going to have some problems with breaking balls but if Bobby Jones feeds him a fastball up out over the plate he's liable to hit the ball into center field or at a right center. Coming up the 31st pitch this inning for Bobby Jones. Was Piazza fooled by that one the way he flinched behind the plate. Well I think that was a big curveball and it looked like it was heading like it was going to go over his head until it bit so Mike was starting to go up for it and realize that it was going to be coming back down. Two and one, two on and two outs. Two and two, and Millwood really pulled off <laughs> that one, didn't he? Well, he's never going to hit that one. If he swings at that all day long, that's that's too high and it's inside. Now Bobby Jones can do a lot of things right now. He can throw a breaking ball low and away, or he can just try to throw that fastball by him up there again. He's trying to put his team back in the dugout. Bobby Jones on two and two to the opposing pitcher, Millwood. Strike three call with a breaking ball. Four strikeouts to this inning for Bobby Jones. But three came in, two on a double by Greg Colbrin. And Brian McRae will lead off with the Mets in the sixth. It's a hot one, sports fans. It's the Alex Man is leading New York as we go to the bottom of the sixth inning. And Kevin Millwood, let's take a look at some strikeout pitches. Well, we talked about in the beginning that he had a good breaking ball, which he did, but he's also got a good live fastball. That first was a, a breaking ball. The rest of these that you see are riding fastballs. He doesn't throw a sinker. He throws a cross-seamer hard high fastball. And that's five strikeouts for Kevin Millwood. He has walked three and allowed a two-run homer to John Olerud. 4-2 in favor of the Braves. Ryan McRae hits it hard, and Chipper Jones cannot pick it. There's a hit for Brian McRae. And it helped that Chipper Jones was playing in about five feet on the grass. Absolutely. John's about to say the speed, this is what speed will do for you. Chipper Jones had to play close. See how he's up? Brian McRae hits this fastball on extension and hits it by him. That's one of those you got to make a reaction very quick. You're standing so close. And that ball was hit hard, but you also have to protect against the bunt. Now Lenny Harris, he's up representing the tying run. Five home runs for Harris, 22 runs batted in. He was showing bunt ball one. Remember earlier in the game in the fourth inning when Kevin Millwood got into the situation where he was pitching out of the stretch and he had a little tugging in the in the upper leg. It might have been underwear problem but it also could have been pitching out of the stretch. That's popped up out of play off to the left. Millwood seems to be a lot more comfortable right now. A swinging bunt by Edgardo Alfonso, just a chop up the third baseline, an infield hit led to Olerud, and Olerud crushed home run number 19 on the season for him. But the Braves rallied for three in the sixth. Outside, two and one. the bounding ball. 
Now let's go to John Walls for a Coors Light game break. Well, guys, you saw Big Mac come up empty in his hack in the seventh inning, but Brian Jordan can connect. A 5-0 St. Louis lead. Jordan down the line to right. John Mabrian, Pat Kellyanne, Jordan with the triple. The card's up 7-zip in the top of the eighth. John? Well, the other guys in the lineup have been feasting. With Mark McGuire getting his share of intentional walks and with base runners on, Jordan has been doing a nice job. Ray Lankford, even Gant. Uh, it's amazing. And of course, they're so proud of what he's doing, but it, and they're such a part of it. In this game here, now you're in a situation, this part of the game, this might be a bunt situation. When you're down by two, Bobby Valentine might call on Bayerga to bunt here to get two runners in scoring position. Bayerga is swinging. I was going to ask you, he'd be bunting with Ordonez up next? Well, he might only for the reason that he might want to get back in the game and he might pinch hit for Bobby Jones after him. He's got Dennis Cook up in the bullpen, so it's a situation. And there's Cook warming up. Last year he was with the Florida Marlins. Trying to help the Mets get to the postseason and perhaps the World Series. Right now, Bobby Jones on the downside of a 4-2 ball game. Big breaking ball and it is a one ball one strike count. Bayerga today has walked. He has hit a fly ball for an out to center field. We were talking earlier about Bayerga switch hitter hitting so much better from the left side hitting 290 left handed as opposed to just a little bit over 200 to 204 right handed. Ball too high, two and one with McCray at second base, Lenny Harris at first. This could be a go pitch for Bayerga. Well, it really could. He'll be sitting on a fastball here. Now watching Kevin Millwood throw out of the stretch. He throws different out of the stretch than he does the windup. He's falling off to the side out of the stretch. He's not locating the ball out of the stretch position. It's almost like he's rushing a little bit, falling to first base. So Bayerga might get a mistake in the middle of the plate. You saw Martinez and Perez warming up in the bullpen for Atlanta. Backing up Kevin Millwood, who's trying to protect a 4-2 lead. The runners lead from first and second. Three and one on Bayerga. Put Bobby Grumlin in there, you can understand that. But Kevin Millwood today has been a different pitcher out of the windup as opposed to going into the stretch. Just not as all consistent. His mechanics are off out of the out of the stretch. He doesn't drive toward the the catcher as he does out of the full windup. With two on and nobody out. Bayerga lifts it in the air to left field. The play for Ryan Klesko. Klesko fights the sun, makes the catch one out. Now here's eighth place hitter Ray Ordonez. Now the pitch count for Kevin Millwood. It's closing in on 100. 97 pitches, 61 for strikes. Now that's a lot of pitches at this juncture, but it is a nice day here. It's not extremely hot. Humidity is down, so you don't perspire that much. But you know, you watched Ryan Klesko battle that sun. That is one of the most frightening things on a baseball field when you're out trying to catch a fly ball and that sun glint hits you in the eyes and you can't find the ball as it is oh it's an awful feeling there's a pickoff attempt on a hit oh. by McCray ow well, as again couldn't get to the throw Well, that's what they used to do in the old days they didn't do it at second in the old days if a guy got on and he was a good base stealer and you didn't like him you drill him over at first base with a pickoff attempt, but you don't do that in second. Well, the throw got there the same time McCray did. McCray's all right. He takes his lead at second base. Harris at first. A big swing by Ardonez. Ardonez does not have a home run. Well, as you were talking earlier about his not having a home run and where he ranks and not chasing Maris and not being with McGuire, that last swing looked like he wanted to prove us wrong up here. Actually, if you're Bobby Valentine, you don't want Ordonez to think about home runs. You don't want him to overswing. You want him to put the ball in play. There's George Fabregas on deck to bat for Bobby Jones. Uh, uh. 
Time call just when Millwood was ready to pitch. The first two men reached base safely. Brian McRae with a base hit to left. Lenny Harris a single to right field. And Bayerga hit a fly ball to left for an out. That's out of play to the right side. The pitchers are up for Millwood. Now he basically is a high fastball pitcher anyway, John, but you're right, especially where I've been harping on it, maybe too much so, but out of the stretch position. He is really up. He's kind of getting under the ball a little bit. He's throwing the ball hard, but he's not locating. You know, when you spin off the ball and get under it, it'll be up in the zone. The next pitch will be pitch 100 for Kevin Millwood. Ordonez with a hit to right field. McCray broke back to second. The ball's bobbled in right by Tucker, but Tucker recovers, and the bases are loaded. One out. Well, this is an interesting base running thing. You have you have Brian McRae running at second base as George Fabregas is going to pinch hit for Bobby Jones. But Brian McRae knew the ball was hit hard to right field. He didn't get a great jump off the of second base. So he just came up and didn't round third base hard with Tucker bobbling the ball on that base at the right field. By now, Brian McRae had already shut it down. His head was down. If he had really made an aggressive turn around third base when that ball was bobbled, he possibly could have scored. Bobby Cox is on his way to the mound. And we have the pitching change with that the score 4 2 the Braves leading the Mets in the sixth inning. We'll be right back. And Ordonez on base. And John you could see how Brian McRae on the base hit by Ordonez had to hold up at first and then kind of trot it around third when the ball was bobbled in right field. He couldn't get the motor going again and had to stay at third base and that's why the bases are loaded. Millwood and here's his incomplete line five and a third innings seven hits two runs three walks five strikeouts 100 pitches he gave up a home run to Olerud. Adonis Perez pitching to Todd Pratt Pratt is batting for Fabregas Fabregas a left handed batter was lifted for the right handed hitter with Cox bringing Perez in the game Pratt does not have a career grand slam. Out of play on the right side. One ball and one strike. John, when you look at this young Odalis Perez who pitched on Tuesday in a no decision appearance against the Astros, pitched an inning, no strikeouts and a walk, he's he's just barely 20 years old. Turned 20 years old in, in June. Just a little guy, 6 feet, 150 pounds in Dominican Republic. Got a nice live arm, though, and he's facing a big right-hander who can pop a fastball. Look at that cut fastball. Yeah, he gets a breaking ball. There's an 80 mile an hour breaking ball. And Todd Pratt, big right hander, typically likes the ball up in the zone and hard. Was fooled with that breaking ball. That was a that was a good one. One ball, two strikes with one out. Perez would like a double play ball or a strikeout. That's a ball. Well, you could hear the crowd ooh a little bit because. You look at a slight left hander pop a ball almost 90 miles an hour up in the strike zone and be very close on Todd Pratt. And that's a foul ball. Two balls two strikes with one out. And there was the breaking ball. Now here's the game within the game. You have the bases loaded. The Braves are leading four to two. Pratt is a pinch hitter and in a 2 2 count Javi Lopez can throw another breaking ball here but with a 20 year old on the mound he will not throw a breaking ball 3 2 I would venture to say so if they're going to throw another one it would be right here. He came with the heat. Up. That yeah. takes care of Pratt. Boy I'll tell you this was a sneaky 91 mile an hour fastball look at this light relaxed delivery out of this Perez and you can see the emotion as he struck out Todd Pratt talking to Leo Mazzoni before the game today and he was saying arm problems occur because you're not throwing the ball properly yes it's not because you're, you're throwing a fastball you're throwing a slider or whatever you're not using that nice relaxed rhythm and motion that's true if you start 
falling all over the mound or you're trying to overthrow and you're spinning around the ball with your hand that's when you get hurt no doubt about it now Tony Phillips has been swinging a bat a lot better right handed this year 290 compared to 205 and there he is now his first at bat right handed fly ball right center field Michael Tucker tracking it and makes a catch shy of the warning track. So the Mets have the bases loaded and left them loaded. And we'll return to Shea Stadium in New York after this word from your local Fox station. Ozzie Gian is going to be leading off for the Braves in the seventh inning against Rigo Beltran. Beltran, one inning with a walk and a strikeout on Tuesday against the Padres. He faces the top of the order. Gian runs up as if to slug bunt the ball and takes a strike. Bobby Jones six hits four runs over six innings. Jones walked two struck out four gave up a home run to Andrew Jones and hit a batter. Oh and two on Ozzie Guillen who has a, a hit in three at bats. Gerald Williams is in the on deck circle to bat for Michael Tucker. And this time of year managers can make some moves. The rosters are a little bit bigger. Ball is poked on the ground towards short. There's Ardonia's look at that magician work. Well, John, we talk so much about the Mets defense, and it is really obvious when you watch these guys play. Now, Ardonia's makes a nice running play. Remember, he's got to try to get a guy gets out of the box on the left side. So he throws in the run. Now, the, the throw would pull a normal first baseman off. Look at after the throw, take a look at the way the ball is played by Olrud. He comes across the base and keeps his foot on, very relaxed, stretches out and makes the play look easy. Now Gerald Williams, who used to be with the New York Yankees. And Gerald Williams and Bernie Williams in the same outfield. And he was very good at hitting left-handed pitching as he does this to left field, getting Phillips turned around, and at the track, Phillips makes the catch. Tomorrow, you can't miss a special edition of Fox Saturday Baseball with Mark McGuire will have the chance to etch a place in baseball history as he's looking to break Roger Maris's record. It all starts at 4 Eastern, 1 Pacific after Fox NFL Sunday, only here on Fox. If you've just joined us in the first at bat today in St. Louis, Mark McGuire hit his 60th home run. 7-0, the Cardinals are leading Cincinnati in the ninth inning. So tomorrow could be the day mm -hmm. to tie the record anyway. And you never know with McGuire. The tear he has been on for the last two weeks. Chipper Jones, Mark McGuire with 113 runs scored. And Greg Biggio next in line. Jeff Tam is warming in the New York bullpen. A 4-2 lead for the Braves. You know, it's interesting. You look at Chipper Jones having another outstanding year. It could be normally in a normal year with a good team like the Braves be considered one of the MVP candidates. But with Sosa having the year he's having with the Cubs making a run for postseason and out of the wild card spot. McGuire, the unbelievable year he's having. Kind of tough for anybody else. How about Moises Alou? Moises Alou, that's right. There's a walk to Chipper Jones. A two out walk allowed by Rigo Beltran. Now Ryan Klesko, he's walked twice and scored one of the Braves runs today. Wild card standings. The National League one game lead for the Cubs over the Mets. The Giants are three out Dodgers eight back. Cardinals just couldn't put their game together. Jeff when they started to get some of the pitching back after the All Star break. Some of their injured players back in uniform and on the field, but the big story in St. Louis has been Mark McGuire, and I think that disappoints McGuire quite a bit. Yes. Yes, he definitely is a team man, and of course they, they haven't recovered from all the injuries to the starting pitching in the beginning of the season. You just don't overcome that. Pitching sets the tone for every ball club. Just take a look at these two teams are looking at today. Exceptional starting pitching. On the ground, and that's by Erga playing a very difficult hop over his right shoulder. Lesko is out. 
John Olerud has a home run today. It'd be Alfonso Olerud and Piazza coming up at the seventh inning stretch. Murray. Andrew Jones hit a solo home run in the fifth. John Olerud countered with a two run blast in the fifth inning, his 19th of the year. And to highlight a sixth inning, Greg Colburn had a two run double as Atlanta scored three times to go up four to two. Staying in the game to play in right field, Gerald Williams. Williams came up as a pinch batter for Michael Tucker. And there's Perez on the mound on a relief of Kevin Millwood. Millwood stands to win the ballgame. The leadoff man is Edgardo Alfonso. Two, three, and four in the lineup against Perez. That had some life to it, didn't it? This guy's got a good arm, John. I was watching him warm up, and you can hear all the way back up here the glove popping behind home plate. He might be real slight, not a big guy, and he's real young, but he's got a live loose arm. Two balls and a strike on Alfonso. One for three for Alfonso today. And there's Perez at six feet tall, 150 pounds. Hit hard toward right field. Gerald Williams reaches. One out. John Olerud. And here's the home run in the fifth inning with that girl Alfonso on. This was a no doubter. Off the scoreboard. September 5th is the due date for Kelly and John Olerud's first child. And Kelly is next door watching tennis at the U.S. Open. <laughs> Here's Olerud. As we check out some of his career highlights, a batting champion with the Toronto Blue Jays, a couple of 100 plus RBI seasons. And he played on two world championship ball clubs with the Blue Jays. Boy, he's got a nice looking swing. He's what they call in baseball a very quiet swing. He doesn't move too much. He's got a spread out stance, keeps his head still. The only thing he does when the pitcher's starting to wind up, he moves his hands back just a little bit. He starts with them close to uh, just above the letters, just moves them back a little. And he shoots the ball to left field. Ryan Fusco won't get it. It's off the wall. Olerud has a long single. Tony Phillips had one of those down the right field line in the third inning. Well, we were talking about John Orr. We can, he's already pulled the home run, but see how here he is. Now all he does is take his hands back a little bit, and that allows him to stay on the ball. Now he hits this ball away to left field. Remember, his home run and his previous at bat was to right field. He is really a fine hitter. And it also was an exceptional defensive play in left field by Klesko. Two great plays both sides of the field for the Braves with their good defense. Bobby Cox will not have the matchup of the lefty Perez facing right-handed power hitter Mike Piazza with the pitching change. We're going to break from Chase Stadium. We'll be right back. Bottom of the seventh inning with Olerud on first base and one out. And here's Dennis Martinez at three and six with a 4-7-1 ERA. His victory on August 9th at San Francisco was the 244th of his major league career, setting a record for the most wins by a Latin American pitcher, surpassing Juan Marichal's 243. Mike Piazza is going to face Martinez. And home runs by direction for Piazza this season. He has 29 all told. So he likes to hit the ball all over the park. But he has power to all fields. That's the point. He puts a good swing on a pitcher. He can hit the ball out anywhere. Ball one upstairs from Dennis Martinez. John, Presidente. This is an interesting matchup because Dennis Martinez, you just saw the top of his velocity would be about 87 on his fastball. The book to get Piazza out is you got to pitch him under the arms and inside hard to get him or breaking balls in the dirt away. That's on the corner. One and one. Well, Dennis has a good breaking stuff, and normally he he's able to drop down. He throws some different arm angles. He's able to paint low and away, but Mike Piazza loves to get his arms extended. We just saw the 11 home runs he hits the right field. That's pitches away from him. He just reaches out and muscles them out of the ballpark. Remember the gutsy performance he had in 95 in the playoffs for the Indians. He was banged up, bad oh, yeah. knees, and still managed to give Mike Hargrove a good performance. 
Well, here's a hit zone for Piazza. We were talking about how he likes to get his hands extended. You can get him out inside. But at times, if he turns on the ball on the inside part of the play, if you make a mistake, he can hit it a long way. Breaking ball wide. Three balls and a strike. Yeah, I like those hit zones. We used to use things like that for the scouting reports with your pitchers. Instead of putting negative thoughts in mind, just say, okay, look at this picture. And this is where you want to pitch, and this is a place you stay away from. Strike two, three balls, two strikes. It's so easy to tell a pitcher or a player what they can't do. Oh, I know it. And the, the more you do and the more you talk about it, the more you confuse them. Show them a picture like the hit zones like we have. It says right away what you can do. That last pitch was a beauty. That's the kind of pitch that Greg Maddox uses where he starts it away and brings it back on the plate. Then it throws from a low arm angle and brought that little two-seamer right back on the plate. Three and two, one out. Runner goes. And there's a base hit to right field. Olerud's going to take third. And Piazza hit behind the runner. That's good hitting. It is good hitting, but he's he's so hot right now, he's not fooled by many things. Well, take a look what Dennis Martinez is trying to do. This is the way he comes into the game to try to face... Piazza. He starts him out with a high fastball, then goes to a moving fastball away, and now a sinking fastball, a breaking ball, a sinker, and then he got a fastball up in the middle of the plate with a runner running, and Piazza hit a ball to right field hard. We're going to have another break here, another pitching change for Atlanta. We'll tell you about the new Atlanta hurler in just a moment. Whatsoever about him. Maximum effort guy. He's really intense. Big guy throws hard. League is hitting 165 only against him. But watch his face and watch his mannerisms. It's give me the ball and here it comes. Right handed Brian McRae has hit 256, 278 left handed. There's the infield. At first base, Piazza is the runner. Olerud is on third. 4 2 Braves. Ryan McRae hits a double play ball. There's one, and Guillen to first. Safe, and a run scores. And Guillen is pointing to Mike Piazza, saying he went out of the way. And the second base umpire, Mark Hirschbeck, is saying he was close enough to the bag. Yeah, the general rule of thumb is if they can reach the base, sliding, you can reach the base. The one thing you can't do is have a rolling block. Bobby Cox is going out to talk about it. Here's, oh, that hit, that hit Piazza's hand. That's why the throw went wide. And Ozzie's complaining that he put his hand up intentionally to hit this ball. Now watch this. Watch it hit Piazza's hand. It did. Now here's where you... couldn't pick it at first base. Right. Now the big cat, if Galarraga's there, he's a gold glove type. Maybe he could have come up with this, cost him a run. But they're complaining. Watch it hit Piazza's hand right here. And it deflects it and changes the direction. So McCray gets a run batted in. Yeah, they're working on Mike's hand. The left hand up in the air. Getting hit with a throw that close can really do some damage. And Butch Husky is going to bat for Harris. Runner at first base, a run in, a 4-3 lead for the Braves. Bottom of the seventh inning. You know, that was a strange play, but a lot of people in uh, a guy like Maury Wills, a great base runner, would have done that on purpose and done things like that. Most sliders or base runners are taught to slide with your hands up in the air. You don't want to put them down in the ground because that's when you jam a wrist or hurt yourself as Husky steps in. But I don't think Piazza was trying to do that. Husky back from a hamstring problem. Late on a fastball from John Rocker. Husky made his first appearance and start against Atlanta since August the 2nd when he faced the Dodgers activated from the DL on September the 1st. Well Butch has big time power one time he weighed about 270 when he's only 21 years old and has been a star in the farm system for the Mets. He checked in time. He did not make a full swing one ball one strike. As you can see he his name applies he is a Husky guy he's a big guy with power. 
Uh, he, he also, if you get the ball out of the way, out over the plate, away from him, can hit the ball to right field. But at times, he'll look for a ball in the middle to the inside part of the plate and turn on it and pull it out of the park. Husky lifts this one to right field. Gerald Williams. And it's out number three. We played seven. It's a one-run game in New York favoring Atlanta. My lead for the Braves over the Mets. Turk Wendell is doing the dealing now on the mound for the New York Mets who are down by a run. 4-3. The Mets managed to pick up a run in the seventh inning. Jermaine Allensworth is playing in right field. And he's batting in the number nine spot. Javi Perez lifts that out of play. Javi Perez, Andrew Jones, and Greg Colburn against Wendell, the former Cub. And take a look at his numbers for 1998. Done a very good job for Bobby Valentine. Started out struggling a little bit, but you know, he is a free spirit and he throws a lot of motion on the mound. But the important thing, the league's only hitting 227 against him, and his numbers are not bad. Helps that Met Mel Bullpen in the middle trying to get to John Franco. That's out of play on the right side. Souvenir over the New York Met dugout. Mets and Braves play tomorrow again on Monday. The Cubs have a one game lead over the Mets. And the Cubs are at Pittsburgh tonight. The Giants are playing out there over the New York Met dugout. Mets and Braves play tomorrow again on Monday. The Cubs have a one game lead over the Mets. And the Cubs are at Pittsburgh tonight. The Giants are playing at Los Angeles today. They are three games behind the Cubs in the National League wildcard race. Rick Reed blowing bubbles in the dugout watching and thinking about what he's going to do tomorrow. What a season he's had for these guys. He came out of nowhere a year ago. That's a replacement player who had banged around in several organizations. Really has pulled his game together. Window with a breaking ball. Can't get Lopez with that pitch. A 2-2 count. We said earlier this is a big game for the Mets. They all are, but they won the first game last night when Tom Glavin really had shutout type stuff. But Mike Piazza won the game with a two-run homer. In this particular game, they can win this game and get to their big winner tomorrow, Rick Reed. Who knows what could happen? Full count. And there's a strikeout. How about the bite on that pitch? Mm -hmm. Wendell gets his first man. Now here's a wild card scramble. Well put. The Mets, the Cubs, and the Giants with no head-to-head -head games remaining. And I'll tell you what, as a manager, I know Dusty Baker, he'll look at this, he said, don't tell me about teams under 500. That's that what does, we were talking about a while ago. That doesn't matter. Oh, you're not kidding. A team has to keep that level of concentration, the yep. level of focus, all three of those teams. Just one or two nights on the downside could finish your season. Well, there are some clubs that play up to the opposition. If they're playing against a team that is really an exceptional team, they'll play exceptionally. That's why, as a manager, Bobby Valentine's got to keep the fire stroking all the time. Well, how about some of those B games in spring training when a major league pitcher goes to face mm -hmm. a lot of minor league talent? Yes. I've seen the minor league talent just light up the big liquor. <laughs> no respect. No respect at all. They're gearing it up. Hey, I can impress the manager and I can impress yep. the farm director here if I hit this guy. And a lot of those young players are up there to make an impression through the month of September to kind of develop the mindset when they go to spring training next year. Yeah, absolutely. This is that Mets dugout. They have put together a heck of a club here at Shea Stadium. Steve Phillips deserves a lot of credit. He's gone out and put the pieces together. For an example, you got Allensworth, Jermaine Allensworth in defensively playing right field now. That was a recent pickup. He can run. Good hitter. And a half swing foul. Two balls, two strikes. Andrew Jones, a single, a home run, and a ground out. Sienna's is warming in the bullpen. Rudy Sienna's. There's another nice story. There's a guy first saw him come up back in the 80s with the Indians has had arm trouble. Always had a great arm. I mean, he could really throw, and he's done a terrific job for Bobby Cox. Well, Leo Mazzoni said uh, Sienna's is one of those who has learned to throw free and easy. Check out the movement on his pitches. Olerud can't make the play on another half swing by Jones. Jones 
those must not be seeing the baseball all that well out of Wendell's hand. Yeah, those are two funky swings you saw. And of course, Wendell jumps all over the place. He's the guy that used to jump over the foul lines, race into the dugout, brush his teeth because he had licorice on his teeth and all that stuff. But now as you see the shadows going across home plate there, it can be a little tough because the hitter has some of the shadows in their eyes and the ball is coming out of the bright sun. 4-3 in favor of the Braves. The drive down the left field line that's going to twist foul and go into the crowd. Well, we're a long way away but that sounded like he broke the bat. Yeah he's, he's heading back. You get that bad sound when you don't hear a bat. He might have broken that on the pitch before that. He just asked asking the home plate umpire Wally Bell can I uh, go, go back to and the pine Yeah yeah. Well that's part of what baseball is trying to do you know trying to speed the game up by not having guys walking all over out of the box going over getting pine tar in between pitches. But with a new bat, they give you the right to do that. How about some of the things going on in Major League Baseball right now where players are giving their caps away on certain days, mm -hmm. giving jerseys away, having an autograph ball to give to a youngster? That's great. Batting practice? I think that's long overdue. Well, the game of baseball has made a tremendous comeback from the labor issues of 94, but it's happened because of great players, policies, have changed in the game. Players are more fan friendly, I believe, now. Old foul down the left field line, three and two on Andrew Jones. But just think of what's going on here in this game right here. You've got the Braves are running away with the East, but trying to get ready to see what they're going to do in the postseason. The Mets, for the first time in a long time, are in a chance to go to postseason play. John Olroot's going for a batting title. Mike Piazza is just playing like he always has behind the plate, the best hitting catcher possibly ever in the history of the game. And the home run stuff going on in other places and then the Yankees on the other side of town with the best record and possibly the best record ever in baseball. High in the air and that's going into the seats again and the beat goes on between Wendell and Andrew Jones. But what's happened and we touched on it earlier in our telecast with what has happened with the home run race it has become a history lesson. People have become interested in that segment of baseball. And usually if somebody is interested in one thing on a certain subject they want to learn more about it. Yes. So they're learning more about the other teams and other things going on in Major League Baseball. More and more fans are coming back to the ballpark. Well that's exciting. I know that when I'm not doing a game I'll turn on anything I can turn on to hear a game watch a game find out scores you know what the home run hitters did. There's another one fouled back and out of play. Well, the Braves still have the best record in the National League. The Padres are a game behind, and then the Houston Astros. And talking to the Braves about the Astros, they're concerned about that ball club. Well, Randy Johnson's arrival, his uh -huh. emergence as uh, one of their starters, and he's just not another starter. No, they've had always great character on that club with Biggio Bagwell and Eddie Moises Alou, and they have some big game players. They really do. And Larry Durker lets them play. Here's another foul ball back. But you know what else? You hear the Braves concerned about the Astros. There are a lot of the clubs that we're just talking about that are very concerned about the Mets. The Mets pitching is exceptional. Their defense, as we said early in the game, is exceptional. They're playing with an enthusiasm with some veterans that bring the fire to this club. There are teams that we're talking about in the Braves and and uh, San Diego has saying, oh, well I'm not so sure I'd like to play these guys. Here's the 11th pitch and this at bat. And another foul ball. <laughs> yes I thought he had one. Wayne is going to pitch a whole ball game to Andrew Jones. You know here's the thing that we just touched on lightly before about Mike Piazza with all his offensive ability. He plays every day hurt. Now he just took a throw off the bare hand at second base and he's back here catching. Off the left hand. Yeah. That's the a glove, glove hand. hand. The 12th pitch in this at bat. Got it. Two strikeouts for Wendell. Lopez now Andrew Jones. Greg Colburn. His two run double. Capped off a three run sixth inning. And that doubles the difference in the game now. Well it happens so often that when you lose a star player in a certain position very often the guy that fills in for them gets a big makes a big play gets a big hit. Remember the World Series I believe it was 78 when Willie Randolph went down. Doyle. 
Brian Doyle had a fantastic World Series and, and it it goes back in history. That's what makes this game so special. People ask well why why is baseball so special. It's because you never know it's not necessarily the biggest strongest team the fastest team. It's the guys that come and play 162 games a year the most dexterous game that we have. I thought Ben Skelly put it so well in the last inning of the Yankees World Championship drive a couple of years ago where he said so you like baseball. This is a sport unlike the others. You can't take a knee and run the clock out. <laughs> you can't go to the four corners. The pitcher has to throw it as Wendell just did and Colburn flies to right field. So Wendell works a one two three eighth inning. Carlos Baerga will be leading them. So now in their fourth decade of live sports coverage the first event live coverage was the Orange Bowl back in 1960. They've had a gorgeous day to fly here in New York. A little on the hazy side. And there's Rudy Sienna's. The numbers 4 0 with a 232 ERA. And how good are those numbers, Jeff Torborg? They are exceptional numbers. And when you look at, we talked before about how the Braves bullpen has been a quite a story after. Mark Wohler's struggled so mightily and still is struggling. Bobby Cox said he probably won't pitch at all for the Braves this year. Get ready for 1999. Yeah, for that's tough. It became such a psychological thing. But here is CNN stepping up with the league only hitting 191 against them collectively. Bayerga takes ball one. Bayerga for the day over two of the walk. Bayerga Ordonez, and then Allensworth. I chopped the first base an easy play for Cobra one out. Bayerga is 0 for 3. Ordonez has a base hit to right field to his credit. One for three on the day for the New York shortstop. John we're getting to the time of day we watched before about the shadow creeping up over home plate. Now you've got a pitcher standing in the bright sun especially a guy who throws hard up in the strike zone. The hitter now is in the shade. So the hitter will see the ball come out of the bright sunlight. And it'll be a brighter color and it hits that shade and then it gets dark. And this one is it high in the air left field. And that high sky and the play made by Klesko. So the number nine spot is the pitcher spot. And it's going to be Matt Franco. Franco had seven straight pinch hits in 1997 June 1st through June 29th. One shy of the club, a major league record set by Rusty Staub in 1983. Staub and Dave Philly of the Bills in 1958 share the major league record. And Matt is a nephew of actor Kurt Russell. So Allensworth is hitting in the number six spot in the order. Franco batting with two outs nobody on base and time running late for the New York Mets who trail by a run and that's going out of play no play at all for Ryan Klesko John when you look at Matt Franco's approach to hitting and one of the reasons he's such a good pinch hitter he goes up there swinging he likes the ball down in his own he lifts his front leg his right leg. And if you get that front leg and you're going to lift it like that you got to do it early and you have to do it kind of slow but you lift that leg up get the weight back on your back leg and they throw that ball in your wheelhouse that's why he jumps as a pinch hitter so quickly he can get a hitter a uh, pitcher I should say who's just trying to get ahead of him. Outside from Sienna's two balls and a strike but it takes a special talent to be able to get up cold off the bench walk uh -huh. out there and perform the way Franco has in his career. You're not kidding. The special mindset too. It's you got to want to do it. Yeah you, you have to know that you might only get one at bat every couple of days. So you're ready. You're up there ready to let it rip. Three balls and a strike with two outs. Tony Phillips in the on deck circle for the New York Mets. The Braves. Have Graffinino, then the pitcher spot, and Ozzie Gian scheduled in the ninth inning. 
The Mets won two to one yesterday their first victory over Atlanta in six games in 1998. The win came on a two run homer by Mike Piazza in the fourth inning. There's a walk. Franco is on with two outs. Tomorrow, it's the premiere of Fox NFL Sunday. Most of you will see a classic NFC East battle as the Redskins take on the Giants, plus other regional action. It all starts at noon Eastern, 9 a.m. Pacific, with a pregame show live from Giant Stadium. Join Terry Howie, JB, and Chris Collinsworth only on Fox. A pinch runner at first base for the New York Mets. Ralph Milliard is running at first base for Matt Franco. Tying run at first, two outs. Phillips the batter. No strike to Tony Phillips. John Franco is throwing in the bullpen for the New York Mets. Phillips hits a drive. Hits it well. Right center field. And it's gone. A home run. Tony Phillips giving the Mets the lead. Phillips second home run. And it came after a walk to pinch batter Matt Franco. Well, John, as Tony Phillips touch, step, steps on home plate and Bobby Cox just can't believe what just happened, the Mets dugout swarmed out of that dugout when they saw that ball go. We talked about what Phillips has been a catalyst for this club. Hasn't so much done it with a lot of fireworks offensively, but with his attitude. Well, now he steps up and hits a big, that is a big home run for this club. And Franco is getting warm in the bullpen. Eight, nine, and one will be coming up for Atlanta. Alfonso takes ball one. A huge home run by Tony Phillips. We talked about Harrison Phillips making a difference in the clubhouse and on this Mets ball club period. There they are with a high five. Well, uh, there was a saying around here a few years ago that Tug McGraw coined, you gotta believe these guys are starting to believe in what they're doing. And you're starting to see little things go in their favor and you've seen clubs who have been successful especially down the stretch get the little things go for them. Off speed pitch swung on missed by Alfonso one and two. Remember it's Tony Phillips playing left field that couldn't come. Well they got close to the ball that was hit by. The first baseman who replaced Galarraga and when you think about. How this game changes. You got Greg Colburn going into first base for Galarraga. Looks like he might win the game with his hit. Phillips does it instead. But Alfonso strikes out. A walk to Franco. A home run by Phillips. And the Mets have a chance to win it now. We go to the top of the ninth. New York is up by a run. Somerov, Rudy Sienes, 5-4 Mets going to the top of the ninth inning, and the new pitcher is John Franco. He tied Dennis Eckersley for second on the all-time save list at 390, September 2nd at San Diego. We asked John Franco, what does that mean to him to be second on the all-time list? That means that I'm old, that's for sure. <laughs> I've been around a long time, but uh, it's, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's a privilege uh, to get up there. Uh, uh, just to show my longevity that I've been in the game, uh, my consistency. Uh, you know, out of all these saves, I've never reached 40 saves in a season. So, uh, you know, I've had a lot of 30 save seasons and high 20s, but uh, that means a lot to be in that company. You know, Lee Smith and uh, Erickus Lee and uh, Bruce Sudo, uh, Raleigh Fingers, all them guys who are up there, and uh, it's a pretty good accomplishment. John Franco is after save number 32 this season. There he is at 390. 390 career in ball one. The leadoff batter is Tony Graffanino, 0 for 3. The new left fielder, Jay Payton. Payton replaces Tony Phillips. There's a strike. One ball and one strike. 
John, John Frank was a guy who's really a good competitor. He comes out on the mound. He tries to throw strikes away from you. And then his put out pitch is a like a circle changeup that he throws down in the dirt and makes you chase bad balls. He really struggled in July of this year. And he's 0 7 at this point. But that's the kind of pitch he makes you try to chase. Two balls and a strike on Graffinino. Helms is on deck. And there's the grip. That is his circle change. Now, those guys want to set the most difficult pitch they have set first, and then they can change it if they have to. Out of play going down the right field line. Now here's the circle. This is what we're talking about. This is a circle right here. It's the index finger and thumb stay together and it allows you to turn the ball over. And most pitchers will set the grip that is most difficult to get set ahead of time in their glove in case a coach is looking. And then if they want to change it they will. And there's John setting that circle change where index and finger and thumb are together. Two balls two strikes on the leadoff batter in the ninth inning the Braves are down by a run. Strike three call. Let's go to Chip Carey for a Coors Light game break, Chip. All right, John, at Dodger Stadium, the wild card chase heating up as far as the Giants are concerned because they're seeing Eric Young bury him a little deeper right now. He leads off the Dodgers, a bomb off of the former Dodger Earl Hershiser. San Fran three and back of the Cubs in the wild card chase, John. All right, in this game today, the Mets are trying to stay right with. The Chicago Cubs who play tonight at Pittsburgh. The Cubs lead by a game. Bob Apodaca, the pitching coach to the mound. Well, he's out there to, to give a scouting report on the pinch hitters coming up to the plate. Wes Helms. Major League debut here for Helms. Right. And so not, you know, you don't go over everybody before a game. You go over the lineup. Well, Bob Apodaca went out to make sure that John Franco and Mike Piazza knows the scouting report or know the scouting report on Wes Helms, the rookie right-handed hitter. Now Helms batting with one out and nobody on base. Recalled from Class A Eugene Thursday. Strike one to him. He was recalled from Triple A Richmond August 27th to replace Danny Batista on the roster. Batista went out with a right knee injury. And Helms hit 275 with 13 home runs in 125 games at Richmond. A foul ball goes out of play off to the left. Perez comes out to the on deck circle. Eddie Perez to bat for us again. 0 and 2 here on the rookie Helms. John Franco trying to save the game for Turk Wendell. Now this will be interesting John you got a rookie up there a great big rookie at that six foot four kid who's a high ball hitter. He's going to go after John Franco now who's in the way up in the count. He's going to see all sorts of off speed stuff I would think. Oh they ran a fast three side. and two call third strike. Scrappanino now Helms. Yeah, that's amazing. If if Wes Helms was given a scouting report in the dugout, they would have said, "If John Franco gets ahead of you, you're going to see changeups." And now our Red Lobster catch of the day, Kevin Millwood, was at the plate in the fifth inning. Watch this. The Braves pitcher sent one a long way, just to the right of center field, and Brian McRae with a Red Lobster catch of the day. There's another look at it. It's an unbelievable play, and this saved this game for the Mets. You know you can look at some crucial points in the game that one did if that gets over his head there are guys running all over this field and they're in a deep hole. Great play. Ball one just wide to Eddie Perez. Hitting 317 four home runs 27 runs batted in. The Braves are down to the last out. The New York Mets with 31 run victories the most in the major leagues. The one out away from making it 31. Well there's a good reason for that good pitching and defense even if your offense is struggling we said the Mets are only rated eighth and they're hitting in the league without a whole lot of power. They win the close ones. Now foul ball two balls and a strike.
John Harold Williams Franco. is on deck. I'm thinking about John Franco. Yeah, here's a guy showing longevity. He's going to be 38 this month. He's added another pitch. He throws a slider now. And normally it had been the moving fastball and a changeup. Now he adds a slider and he strikes out Tony Graffinino with a slider, surprising him, and then a fastball to a young pinch hitter in West Helms. There's ball three. Three balls and a strike. Franco rubs up the baseball. Turk Wendell is a pitcher of record on the plus side. Worked an inning. He struck out two batters. Had a fly ball out from Greg Coburn after striking out Javi Lopez and Andrew Jones. Three and one with two outs. Ball four. Uh oh, you know what happened after a two out walk. In the bottom of the eighth inning, a walk to Matt Franco was followed by Tony Phillips. Second home run as a Met. And here's Gerald Williams. It's never easy, is it? It is never easy, and we're seeing a pinch runner. George Lombard. Here's the kid of the real hot shot football player out of Georgia. And the, the Braves convinced him to sign with him. It's taken him a while to get here, but he had a sensational year that this guy is a very talented athlete. And obviously he's going to the pinch run and he can run. Lombard at first base with two outs. And Gerald Williams, 0 for 1, hit a fly ball to left field, facing Rigo Beltran in the seventh inning. Olaru comes over to say something to Franco. Well, it was also very interesting, John, that in that last at bat with Gerald Williams, he just missed hitting the ball out of the ballpark. He hit it off the end of the bat a little bit. Now Gerald Williams. Olerud's going to play in front. The runner at first base, Lombard. Fastball outside. Five to four Mets on a Tony Phillips two-run homer in the bottom of the eighth inning. The Mets since the fifth inning have scored all of the runs two in the fifth one in the seventh and two in the eighth inning Mark McGuire hit his 60th home run his first at bat today against the Reds here's a swing and a pop up this should do it the catch is made by Alfonso and the Mets have won a pair of one run games in this series the final today, 5-4, the Mets over the Braves on a two-run homer by Tony Phillips in the eighth inning. The win to Turk Wendell. The loss pinned on Rudy Sienez. John Franco with his 30-second save. So for Jeff Torborg, I'm John Rooney saying so long from Jay Stadium. The final, 5-4 today, the Mets over the Braves. John Walls will be along from our Fox Network Center with some final thoughts after these messages. When you and Sammy got together in Chicago a couple of weeks ago, did that do anything to loosen you up since you are now on a tear and were not hitting so many? No, I, I, don't, I don't think so. I mean, it's just, I mean, I absolutely respect and, and love watching what he's doing. I, it's, um, I mean, it's, uh, we, we don't, as players, have much time to spend with each other on, vis you know, when other teams come in or we go in there. It's just, and basically the only time I get to visit with him is, when he's at first base and then we were just rapping about just anything and that's really about it right here in front uh -huh. when will your PSA on child abuse be airing and who approached you for it who approached it for it? no my foundation is my foundation is doing it yeah we're doing it and um, uh, It'll be run during the playoffs, at like, I think, three times in the World Series once. So, um, what's that? What's the name of your association, your foundation? The Mark McGuire Children Foundation, Foundation for Children. In the back? You've been asked about this record for the last couple of years, um, and you've talked about not letting it affect your mind, but is it going to get increasingly harder now that you're closer? Again, it's out of my control. It's to the man upstairs. Okay, Steve.
Do you think somewhere out there in Nickelodeon land, some kid is taking a great big swing and his coach is saying, who do you think you are, Mark McGuire? Yeah, I'm sure there are. I mean, I used to take swings and think I was Dave Kingman and Steve Garvey and Dusty Baker. But, uh, you know, that's just the way it goes. Uh, Over here in the corner? I guess I'm honored if children are doing that. Does it make much difference to have someone like Sosa along with you in terms of camaraderie and competition to spur you on? Well, I, uh, there's, there's no competition. I, I don't know where this competition is getting going, uh, started, but I mean, it's, it is so good what's going on right now for the game of baseball. And it's, um, it just happens to be that, you know, it's the home runs and what he and I are doing. And um, I don't know what else to say. In the back. <laughs> is that a Sammy Sosa step you're doing at second base? No, I was just a little out of sync. I have, I touch the bag a certain way and uh, each bag, so I had to continue to do it. What's that? What? It was not in honor no, no, no. of him? No. Over here? <laughs> Can you talk what? about the man upstairs? Can you talk a little bit about what motivates you? Well, I mean, it's easy what motivates me. I love this game of baseball. That's why I play it. I mean, there's, there's, there's no, there's nothing to go around it. It's just I love the game of baseball, and um, I play it hard every day. That's really what it is. Okay, back here. <laughs> Can you talk about your post-homer ritual with your teammates when did it start what does it mean <coughs> and is it less painful than the you know, bash I, I don't know we just started doing you know everybody it's you know hit, doing the fist or high five and for some reason i just started hitting our guys in the stomach you know and it's like <laughs> they got pretty good stomachs but uh, <laughs> uh, we just started doing that and it's i don't know it's just carried on and it's just something that uh, people are watching right now okay. tom Have you hit anybody too hard no, yet? No, no, we, we watch it. <laughs> <laughs> Your ball's, you're getting ready. I see the ball now. <laughs> Who could eat more hot dogs in one sitting, you or Babe Ruth? I bet you Babe Ruth could. I'll, I don't really like, if we're talking steak, I'll, I'll match him with steak, but not hot dogs. Okay, Mary, <laughs> nope. uh, When Maris was going for the record, he seemed to be crushed by the uh, media pressure, and now with even more, it doesn't seem to affect you or Sammy. Why not? Because I've had a lot of people just say, enjoy it, you know? I don't know if I'll ever be in this position again. So, um, and I, I, I like it where there's um, there's not a lot of things in my face, and I do have a claustrophobic kind of feeling all the time. But uh, this is it's much more comfortable. And um, hey, I'm realistic about things. You know, you can't hit a home run every day, and you can't get a hit every day. But there's one thing I can do is make adjustments and try to do my best, and that's what I do. Baseball is a sport that puts its uh, past heroes on a pedestal as legends. You're becoming a modern legend. How does that feel? I mean, it's incredible. I mean, it's absolutely incredible. And hopefully, you know, hopefully it continues with not just me, just with the other great players in the game. Because there's just, I mean, there's just unbelievable talent right now in the game of baseball. And I think everybody across America is seeing it. And, and um you know, I just happen to be one of the ti one of the guys at this time that is um, is playing this game with the great players, and I mean, just like there was great outstanding players back then. I mean, it's just that's the way it goes.
Okay, go ahead. These next three days may be the biggest days of your life. How will you take care of yourself? <laughs> well, let me see. Uh, no, I, I, I'm not going to do anything different. You know, I just be myself, go out to dinner, relax, listen to music. You know, my parents came into town, so that's really about it. I mean, I'm not going to change anything. It's just uh, I go about being who I am. Hey, Tim. Your home run shot today was fairly unemotional. Do you imagine number 61 or 62 will be more like Joe Carter in the World Series? <laughs> well, I've had some guys on the team say so they might come around and run with me if that happens. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm just going to do it when and if it hap whenever it happens. It's just, uh, I'll just let my emotions go and see what happens. Okay. John, last one. After all the walks you've had this year, do you think you're getting more pitches now to hit? Well, I don't know. I mean, pitches a hit. I mean, if you go back and look on video, pitches a hit. What's a pitch to hit? A pitch to hit is a pitch that has the white of the plate. You just don't see many of them. I mean, um, and just because you get a pitch hit doesn't mean you're going to hit it. Um, I get pitched tough no matter what, and I know a lot of people are making a lot of th things about, well, are you going to go right at these guys? Are you going to pitch to them? You know, this is a game of baseball. You've got to play the percentages, and I take what's given to me. And, uh, you know, I don't want anything given. I, I want to work. I want to, I want to earn what I, what I can get. And if I hit a pitcher's mis mistake, then that's great. If I hit a pitcher's pitch, then that's even better. But uh, hitting is not easy. It's tough, and it's 99% metal. And you've got you to be prepared every day. Okay, thank you. All right, thank you, guys. And tomorrow, Bud Selig and the Maris family will be in here pregame at a team to be announced. Okay, so if you just tuned in, yes, Mark McGuire today at Bush hit number 60 on the season. He's now tied with Babe Ruth. In fact, he reached 60 home runs in 141 games. Ruth needed 154. Mac three ahead of Sammy Sosa, who hit number 57 yesterday against the Pirates. It broke Hack Wilson's team record of 56. And Jeremy, Jeremy Schapp joins us right now from Bush Stadium. He's been following the McGuire watch just like we have. And Jeremy, first of all, describe the atmosphere at Bush Stadium today. The, the noise, the popping flash bulbs. We really haven't seen anything like this in a long time. Chuck, it really was remarkable. It is remarkable. As we speak, there's still hundreds of fans here listening to the post-game press conference, cheering loudly. Mark McGuire can't see them, but he could hear them clearly during the press conference. There are millions of more people cheering that he can't hear. Also, the uh, media attention. Let's talk about that. You've covered a whole bunch of events uh, for ESPN. Where does this rank? Uh, is there any event that you've covered that can compare to this? Well, I would say, actually, I had the privilege of covering the World Cup over the summer, and there were quite a few more members of the media at the France-Brazil final on July 12th than there are here today. But it is unparalleled among the events I've covered anyway, and I certainly haven't covered everything, especially for an event that focuses on one single athlete. Sure, at the World Series, at the Super Bowl, you're going to have more numbers, you're going to have more people, but there at the Super Bowl, you've got 100 players to focus on. At the World Series, you've got 50. At the NBA Finals, you've got 24. Here, it's one guy, and it's the only one they're interested in. What about pressure? Uh, Mark McGuire, you'd think that with all the attention that he's been getting, it would get to him, but it seems like he's become more carefree with every game. Uh, are you surprised by that? Well, it is a little bit surprising. I was here several weeks ago, and at that point, it was getting to him. The clamor around the locker, the microphones, the cameras. But it's been a more controlled environment the last couple of weeks. It's been a press conference situation. He's had the media at a little bit of arm's length, and clearly he's more comfortable with that, and I think it's helped him relax. Yesterday, he skipped a pregame press conference. He said to clear his head. Apparently, it worked. Uh, Jeremy, one more question. I know you have to go. Uh, you surprised so many teams, so many pitchers are actually pitching to McGuire, giving him uh, pitches to hit. It's a little bit surprising. I mean, that was the constant talk leading up to this. Would he see enough good pitches to hit? It seems now that pitchers are more afraid of pitching around him and consequently getting booed for walking him than they are of, 
you know, facing the music and throwing the ball right down the plate. He's gotten some good pitches to hit. He's also gotten some pitches that weren't good pitches to hit and driven them out of the park. Nobody can stop Mark McGuire right now. Yeah, and we've yet to see a pitcher really go inside and high on him. That would be interesting to see. Yeah, I, I wouldn't want to be in that pitcher situation. <laughs> Jeremy Schaaf from Bush Stadium, thanks for joining us. Thanks, Chuck. Back with more on ESPN News after this. Hi, I'm Dick Clark, and now everyone can enjoy the freedom of the new Isis cellular phone from Philips thanks to prepaid cellular. Introducing prepaid cellular from Worldwide Direct. With prepaid cellular phone cards, there's no Got monthly it? bills. Take the phone just in case. Thank you. And no contract, no credit check, and no deposit. Got car trouble? My car is broken down. Can you come and help? Help is just a call away. So forget those outrageous phone bills. With prepaid cellular phone cards, buying airtime is easy. Order from home and the phone arrives at your door ready to use. Get the Philips Isis prepaid cellular phone. A $199 value. Now just three easy payments of $33. And there's no contract, no credit check, no deposit, and no monthly bills. So pick up the phone, America. It's for you. Now for only three payments of $33, you're guaranteed cellular service regardless of your credit history. Call 1-800-273-1937. Pick up the phone, America. It's for you. Well, he's no Mark McGuire.